Hey everyone, the Talking Dads podcast is brought to you by Little Scholars Early Learning Center. Whether your family needs infant care, a preschool program, or before and after school care, Little Scholars' highly rated step-up to quality programs provide quality early childhood education at an affordable price. Visit www.littlescholars.net to get in contact with an enrollment specialist and schedule a tour of any of their five Lake County campuses. Here's the deal. Talking Dads fans are getting a little bonus. Mention that you heard about them uh, through our podcast and when you tour and you'll receive $25 off of your registration fee. Again, that's Little Scholars Early Learning Center, where children learn, play, and grow together. We are also brought to you by Pub Fredo Gastropub. Uh, Pub Fredo was voted Best Gastropub in Cleveland in 2019 by Cleveland Magazine Silver Spoon Awards. We love Pub Fredo. Their menu is chef-inspired, always pushing the limits of traditional pub fare. Uh, the other night, I had a burger. I believe it was called the Pub Burger. It was incredible. Cooked perfectly. It was amazing. Uh, and you won't have a problem pairing your favorite item on the menu with their great selection of local craft beers, crafted cocktails, and of course, an amazing bourbon and whiskey selection. I went with the uh, Bullet 10-year uh, with my pub burger. All of this in a cozy, fun, comes you our atmosphere. You can check them out at pubfredo.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Pubfredo Gastropub. What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Talking Dads. We've got a groundbreaking episode for you guys this week. We have Jenny Fetzer from Anchor Counseling right here in Menor, Ohio, our first female guest on the show. She was incredible. Uh, we had a really good time with her. She brought some whiskey. Uh, we drank. We kind of went through therapy ourselves. Uh, it was such a good time, but we really did have an, an amazing conversation, just parenting and being adults and children and all of the things that makes us human. Uh, it was a really good time. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a wonderful weekend. In a world where moms continue to dominate parenting authority and a father's role is minimized in society, two dads take on the toughest parenting topics on a weekly basis, all while drinking bourbon. They are the Talking Dads. to a podcast and I said yeah and he goes why do you have bourbon <laughs> put the kids to bed <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it, I got stuff to do do other podcasts not just I, drink and yeah that's it loosens you up a why, little bit. why do sure. they do more comfortable <laughs> yeah sure. so what's the point of having the podcast if there's not gonna be any alcohol involved I, like I it agree. doesn't compute <laughs> yeah, I agree um, so you're local, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, like born and raised or? Um, so I grew up mostly in Chagrin Falls okay. um, area, went to Kenston High School, and then um, college in Canton for undergrad, and then lived in Kentucky for... Uh, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I like Here's we perked up. Perk up. <laughs> we both look at each other like, oh. I thought that might give me bonus points, but... <laughs> Uh, yes, lived in Kentucky for three years while I got my master's, but I was a fool and was not interested in alcohol at that time and wasted three years in right. Kentucky. Uh, that's like okay. a solid hindsight, solid right? waste. <laughs> to be fair, one of our best friends lived in Louisville mm. for like yeah, we, two years, yeah. three years. We just weren't into it at that time. And we, we never went down there. Shame. We went and visited Big, him when he lived in Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah, but Pittsburgh. we didn't go to Louisville. <sighs> we just weren't into it yet. Yeah. It was I, more like beer it, at that time. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was, or yeah. like seltzers or something yeah, wasteful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. even think seltzers were around back then. No, they may I was trying but to think. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I don't even know when that when that became a thing. It was like, like and it happened fast too. Yeah. I mean, and it's it, everybody has a seltzer it's, now. It's it's been big. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, I mean bourbon's huge now. It is. But now it's becoming tequila. Yeah, tequila um, one. Yeah, but, I probably won't ever. Okay. See. No. We're with you on that. No. Because I mean, I'm I not can't. into it, but I'm not saying the, never. The smell of it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> There's still so much time. <laughs> There's a lot of time to change yeah. and uh, tr- branch yeah. out a little bit. But yeah, uh, tequila just doesn't agree with me. Mm-hmm. The smell of it. What do we have here? I believe that's from Indiana. Okay. Um, Journeyman Distillery. Mm-hmm. My sister and her fiance brought that back for us okay. and i was like that looks fancy there's like specific numbers on the back yeah there's a so it says the batch number on the yep. back and everything mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Hmm. i like it so it's actually michigan 
Michigan. Yeah. There you go. See? Oh, it's you know Michigan. Yeah. All right. Distilled and bottled by Journeyman Distillery in Three Oaks. Am I as Michigan, right? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm like, oh my God, so wait. It's so about geography. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Indiana. Okay, right. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I'm excited to try some. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll let you do the honors whenever you're ready. Yeah, you can pour yourself some but first. But in the mean, before we get oh. too far, mm-hmm. why don't you introduce every... Uh, mm-hmm. I have to say, before you introduce yourself, yes. I'm very, very excited. This is a groundbreaking time this is. for this the is podcast. Mm-hmm. You are our first female guest, and I couldn't be more thrilled. Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to be here. We appreciate I you coming I didn't know it was such a big honor until I walked in the door. And yeah, like, well, well, we didn't want to tell you ahead of time. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've been the first female in, in several situations yeah. own, owning a small business. So okay. There you go. Hashtag groundbreaker. Mm. There you go. Love that. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) That's very cool. So yeah, Jenny, please introduce yourself and then uh, we'll get right into it. Um, So my name is Jenny Fetzer and I own a clinical mental health practice and mentor named Anchor Counseling. I always have to like enunciate that because sometimes people are like Anchor Counseling. I'm like, well, well, I mean, we do that, but like it's not not the goal. Um, So that was something that kind of evolved, Um, wasn't planning. I previously worked at Crossroads and had good experience there working in the school-based department and then had a kid and wasn't able to pay my bills in community mental health. So then I started just like seeing clients on the side and becoming um, independently licensed. And then that blew up and that was six years ago. And we have 19 staff now Wow! and we see about 200 clients and families a week. So um, I have two boys, Micah and Miles, and um, in between parenting and owning the practice and i have my own caseload there yeah um, that's pretty much what most of the time is yeah spent. wow yeah. i yes. get that mm-hmm. that that's is awesome great. yeah that's super yeah. cool uh yeah so one of the reasons that uh we reached out um and steve good call on that because steve did a lot of the the groundwork of finding somebody who would be amazing for the show um is you know when we took our break uh over the summer we wanted to come back and do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and we kind of talked about this before we ended last season mm-hmm. uh, of wanting to kind of evolve, right? We did a hundred episodes of dads and getting the perspective of pretty much local, but you know, just dads that are doing something. Sure. And, that, and that was really cool and a yeah. lot of fun. And we're going to continue doing that, but we thought that it would be really cool to add um, an element of value, yeah. um, past first person experiences. Mm-hmm. Right. And, uh, so having, a, a, and you, do you specialize in, uh, children and adolescents? Yeah. I thought mm-hmm. so. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so that makes a lot of sense for our listeners. You know, we like to say that we try and come up with some of the hard conversations and make it more of a comfortable conversation so that, if you're ever in a situation that you maybe need to talk to somebody, sure. um, you know, it's not such a, a, a barrier of, well, I've never, never even heard of this or what do I, what do I, what am I supposed to expect? So, um, we like to say on the show, like if we can reach one guy out yeah. there that maybe already has a kid, doesn't have a kid mm. is in the situation, isn't in the situation, mm-hmm. but at some point maybe like we've done more than we could have ever imagined by doing the show. So, well, and I can tell you too, just even in the, the clients that we see the involvement with healthy dads is not, um, it's not common. Sure. Um, and that's not always related to, you know, willingness, willingness or desire, but, um, you know, if there's a primary breadwinner, if they can't take the client to appointments, whatever it is, but it's not a, it's not a primary thing I see even in my practice. That, that makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we know even just from doing the show, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. um, we typically get guys that are super involved, but mm-hmm. a lot of guys by the end of the show will be like, yeah, you know, I wish I could do more. I wish I, you know, yeah. I'm at work for 14 hours a day mm-hmm. or whatever. And, and, and again, through no fault of their own, right. but like, how do we, push that conversation forward to say, all right, like there's something that could be done, yeah, even if it's a little step. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Um, and that's only going to help our kids. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think uh, a lot of times with uh, parents is it's hard to admit that something might be wrong. Right. Like if you notice something with your child, it's admitting that, well, we might need to get help. 
we talked about this with somebody else before. Like they had their son who had like anxiety Mm -hmm. and they said like, they're glad they did it early, nipped it in the butt early because the longer you wait, obviously there's going to be more issues. It'll be harder to take care of. So, um, this conversation that we're having, this could, like Ian said, this could help somebody who's watching, listening, whatever. Could help me and you. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, so that's, that's the big picture of it, you know, um, just realizing that yeah, there might be something wrong and it's okay. There's nothing wrong with getting it checked out. Why not? Right. You know, because I mean, a lot of times with even guys going to the doctor just to go get something checked yeah. out, we're like, eh, yeah. I'm guilty. Guilty. Yeah. Guilty. I'm like, hey, yeah. uh, I could call and start making an appointment. I'll have like the uh, motivation to do it finally. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to call and get this checked out. I'm going to go down the list of things that I think are wrong. And then I'm on hold for like a half hour and they're like, uh call back. I'm like, "Eh, you know what? Not really feeling it. I'm not going to call back and do this again. So, I mean, it's that easy to just kind of push it off and wait and, or just not do ever do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So the big thing is trying to get it done. Yeah. Finding it early. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. I I have a quick question on this before we really dive into it is I think that this is our assumption that men have a harder time with it. That is, it is an assumption of ours. Yes. And I don't know if it's like a self-deprecating assumption or if it's um, or if it's validated. I don't know. Have a harder time with um, accessing support services. Not even or? accessing, okay. but maybe um, navigating the barriers to uh, accessing. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, mm-hmm. like I think that the 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 access is at least in my brain seems like it would be pretty much equal like but the barriers seem like they would be um larger or more prevalent for men just based on the way that our brains are wired Mm -hmm. Uh, i don't know if you see that like in your practice or like uh when men and even i have um a couple of the most wonderful teenage boys on my caseload right now once you can get them in to therapy um, they're usually much more, they make much more progress in a smaller amount of time than women do. Um, okay. so the buy-in can take longer. And I think that that's related to lots of things. I think it can absolutely be related to just the culture in general. We don't, there's such a taboo around mental health. There's a taboo about, about taking care of our bodies and noticing our bodies and even listening to those, which is a huge problem because it turns out it's pretty important in being a person. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, but once they're in and they start doing the work and I would say even in our little boys too, they tend to be more committed. Okay. And then again, that's just a general sweeping sure, statement. Sure. Um, but that's what I've seen in my practice. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I mean that, I guess that makes sense. Um, I know that even like in the daycares, we probably see more boys that have, uh, some some issues um the girls seem much easier to work with in the short term but i think you're I, now that i'm actually thinking about <laughs> it i think that we see more progress with the boys quicker once they are getting the help that they so need once you address yeah. it you yeah. know yeah because um i i think again general statements i think that we see a lot of mental health issues and I, I, I use that term loosely, sure. but a lot of mental health concerns, um, in our little boys speaking, having to, um, as behavioral issues with little girls, they can be very internal and they can be very focused, um, on, you know, the relationship or I don't want to communicate what's going on with me because I don't want to damage the relationship. Little boys, we, in a lot of ways have the gift of you kind of see what you get in a lot of the circumstances. So the manifestation of yeah. those issues are more physical. In, in yes, in generally. Boys, generally. Mm-hmm. generally. Yeah. So they'll, so we'll have parents that bring kids in um, like, you know, five and six year old boys that are bouncing off the walls. And as soon as you develop the relationship and start to figure out really what's going on, I mean, they're the, the most compliant kids sure. typically the little girls it can take months and months and months for them to warm up and to really see what's going on so i mean i'm just thinking about this like with my son like i can see the way he is cuz he's just um the same type of way he's uh very vocal when it, mm-hmm. around us he's a little he's crazy you know he's very wild and everything and then like um his emotions come out a lot more yeah uh whereas like i notice my nieces 
mm-hmm. like my niece, uh, she's very, if something happens, she gets hurt or she, if something happens to her, she kind of just kind of shuts down almost. Like implodes. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's all in mm-hmm. internally, but like Sam, like he'll, he'll say everything that's wrong yeah. and, like, and he'll blow up. Like, I'm mad, and he's, I'm angry. He's, I'm angry. Yeah. He shows you his emotions. He shows, he'll, you know exactly what's wrong. Yep. That's right? way easier so to do. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking about that. Yeah. It's all make it, it makes a lot of sense. And you do yeah. say, they always say like boys are more wild, you know, like, um, with di- different type of, I don't want to say mental things, but like, uh, or issues. Yeah. I don't want to, that sound bad, but like, um, like ADHD and that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Like they're a little more wild, right? Mm-hmm. They always, you always notice boys seem to be a little more wild than girls, but maybe because they're just, Mm-hmm. Their emotions We're are just out. wired differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I, mean, I don't know if that's fair to say or not. No, but. it, it no. is. And we pathologize little boys being little boys a lot of the time. Like there there will be lots of times where we'll have a new assessment and there's nothing wrong with the child except that they're at school all day and they're tired of it. Sure. That's it. Yeah. There's nothing and you probably see that too. There, there's mm-hmm. some, it, it goes to personality type. It goes to access to technology, how much they're on their tablet. It goes to their diet, everything. And so sometimes they'll bring in a child and there's no mental health concern, right? right. It's environmental. Or, yeah. But with girls, at least in my practice, I've just seen, um, they do tend to implode a okay. little bit more. So with boys, it's kind of out on the table. You yes. kind of know what you're dealing with. Yes. Yeah. I feel like that kind of like reverses as you get older though. Like yes, the guys, because then the guys, like as, as you get older, you, yeah. we keep it all in, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you don't really right. talk about yeah. we're men. Yeah. I don't, I don't talk mm-hmm. about emotions. I don't bring this kind of, I don't, tell anybody my problems. You don't talk about it. Whereas well, because the, the messages and culture change. So when you're a little boy, you have freedom to, to bop around play. and do whatever, like that's yeah. the expectation. And then as you age, the expectation is to lock it up and deal with what you need to deal with. So it's, it's totally the messages. I mean, that's a hundred percent correct. I mean, I know that like as a 17, 18, 19 year old man, whatever you want to call him, at 17, 18, 19, I was in the military and I can remember I had this, uh, for lack of a better term, we'll call my boss. Mm -hmm. Um, and he used to carry around straws in his pocket. And anytime somebody would complain about anything, he would throw a straw at you and just say, suck it up. Like, so there was no, and granted, I am a huge proponent of like a hard military, right? Like it's a job that needs to be done and you can't, a lot of times you have to right. just suck it up. Or someone's right? going to die. Right, right. <laughs> sure. So I, I'm not like complaining about that at all, but that mm. certainly shaped a lot of who I became going into my late 20s and early 30s. Um, that's kind of how I, mm-hmm. m- even how I started my business with my mm. staff. And I had to learn very quickly. Again, I'm the only man in my company. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It's all women. That's and, an interesting dynamic. Uh, whew, it sure is. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, I, I mean, seriously, though, I've had to learn um, how to like almost rewire how I think yeah. because the way that I would deal something is not plausible. Like mm-hmm. I cannot expect the same thing. Um, and I, And I truthfully, I think that's made me a better person just by being able to have the experience of like the traditional male like <laughs> macho, yeah. in, macho mm-hmm. you know whatever come up but then also now i'm in a such a female dominated mm-hmm. industry i have to not even say tone it down i had to actually change sure uh, how you approach things. how mm-hmm. i approach everything yeah mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and those scripts in your head and they were i think it's it's good for us to be compassionate with ourselves and you needed that script of it's hard for me to say this is therapist. We have very bit different backgrounds, military and therapist. Yeah, right. But um, to suck it up because it your people's lives could have been on the line. So you could you couldn't have been able to take a break and talk about your feelings at that point. Right. So it was adaptive at that point. That is what you needed to do at that point. Then you got out and had kids and life looked very different. And sure. now you're, you know, running a daycare. So I mean it's you did what you needed to do then, and it served you then. But applying that now, <laughs> your staff would quit. A hundred percent. Oh yeah, 100%. absolutely. You would not sergeant. get what you wanted. I'd have like four, four um, <laughs> like teachers who would just do everything, but like we would never get anything no. done. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, you can be a drill instructor. And we also right. have no clients. Right. That's and true the, too. Yeah, like, this is, the kids would be very. Upset. Well, I don't know, man. You ever see kindergarten cop? You know what's I funny? Mean. So these Excellent. last couple of weeks, I. Uh, 
through staffing issues and things like that, uh, we actually had a ton of vacations going on. And so I took on a school age room. It's one of our smaller school age room. There's like nine kids. There's five boys, four girls. Okay. And they get out of school and the morning they're great. Like days started wonderful, easy to, to, to manage when they get off that bus. It is just like, like, they're oh, it's feral. exciting, man. It's yeah, in, absolutely. They're, they're feral, 100%. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I started, and they love it. I had to go into, like, military mode, mm. and, like, I'm getting them to line up. You make and, it fun. Like, in, in, like, two weeks, I've gotten them <laughs> from, awesome. like, absolutely bonkers to now they know. They go downstairs. They hang up their stuff. They Good. sit down. Once they're called on, they go wash their hands. Like, it's been amazing to see. And, and I've been telling them that too. And like, I've had been having conversations with some of the parents and like, it's been really, really cool to see. And part of me is like sad because I'm not going to be able to do it forever. Like I yeah, have to having fun yeah. doing it to my yeah, well, hey. stuff, but, um, hopefully I can at least impart some of that on, you know, when might be a new, uh, business idea back. there. Sure. Uh, I don't know, man, that would be tough. <laughs> I mean, it would be cool. Hire somebody that could do it then. How about that? Well, that's what I mean. But like even to train that and to get buy-in from parents because yeah. like parents I'm are all having about good it. conversations I will with send me my now because I've just been doing it. <laughs> but to say like, this is our program, this is what we mm-hmm. do. I don't know. Yeah. But that that's an excellent example of kids. I, I think sometimes adults don't think that kids want structure when really it's the same. It's the same for us as humans. Our ability to feel safe in our environment is directly connected to being able to anticipate what happens next. So if they are able to anticipate, I'm going to go here, I'm going to hang this up, even as, as simple as that seems, they know that it's a safe environment. So a lot of times when you see families that have a lot of chaos, again, maybe not on purpose, they just can't get things together or schools that can't get things together. Um, kids feel very unsafe and a lot of the chaotic behaviors come because they, their nervous system is totally activated and they don't know how to deal with it. So you've probably even seen some behavior changes in the kids sure, yeah. and just getting that structure Absolutely. in place. So that's wonderful. That's yeah, awesome. It's been cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Although I did have some sad faces. Was it yesterday? Yeah. Today's Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. And again, had all this progress and yesterday for whatever reason was just, they weren't having it. No one, <laughs> no one wanted to follow the directions. And yeah. I, <laughs> I didn't take it too far, but I like in my head, I wanted to. Oh, yeah. But I was going back to like boot camp style where it was like, <laughs> okay, we're not going to do this right. Everyone, we, I marched them back upstairs and said, we're going to start this day over. We did this three times. <laughs> and finally, I was like, all right, I really got, got to get you guys some snacks. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I still Eat the have to make we'll sure. Right, yeah, we're going right, back. Right. We're starting Fuel over up. again. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> but I would say, and it was, it was actually trying to think if it was the boys or the girls and I don't know if that really matters but about half the kids finally at one point were like all right guys if we just do this right then we get to go play Aww. there you go and then the other half they just could not control like big emotions right like they're giddy and they're just feral you know yeah feral. like you said um, like you're at school all day and then like mm-hmm. they're sick of it so it's like mm-hmm. now it's time to just let it all out mm-hmm. oh you know it was Wednesday it was when it was raining too. So we, oh, we could go, go outside. outside yeah. Because yeah. typically we go outside and we get as much energy out as we can. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's just interesting. Um, I always try and look at positives out of situations, right? And mm-hmm. so for these last couple of weeks, I have been in in the centers every single day and I've been trying to take this opportunity and, and I have. I've noticed such a positive, like, okay, number one, I'm so much a good reminder of what my teachers go through all the time. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. That's been really good for me. Seriously though. Uh, yeah. As like, tired okay, as I, I get am. It. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I know why I'm tired. You appreciate it. Uh, sir. You know, and, I mean, that's, that's a crazy, I, I mean, I give them all the credit in the world and I always say it, man. I'm like, I cannot imagine like dealing with my five year old and three year old. Well now four, it's like, oh, I can't imagine a classroom of these kids Yeah, yeah. and trying to get them to listen and mm-hmm. just crazy. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. give them all the credit in the world. That's mm-hmm. a job that I can never do Yeah, without losing my mind, I think, or right. flipping out. You right. know what I mean? Like that's already hard enough to do. It's a lot of regulation. Yeah. Like, and, and how we regulate kids is we, we do co-regulation, which really is the worst news because you have to be pretty regulated to be able to regulate a room of kids. Yeah. And yeah. so when you cannot be regulated, no one's regulated. <laughs> Same 100- happens at home. Yes. Yeah. 
So it's it's unfortunate, really. <sighs> yeah, it's tough. I mean, life is is crazy, and we all have a hundred things going on. Like my between my schedule and my wife's schedule, we're all over the place. We yeah. have to be. It seems like we always have to be somewhere at a certain time. So it's like one hundred percent just rushing all the time. So then it's frustrating because the kids don't understand how time works and they don't understand being late to things. So it's like, just <laughs> dude, for the hundredth time, please put your socks on. We need to get out the door. We're going to be late again. And they're like, okay, I don't care if we're late. Cause right. that, that means nothing to me. But right. to me, I'm time like, I'm like, I need to be there on time. We need to get there. We're going to be late. How in the world are your shoes still not mm-hmm. on your feet? I'm like, I, I'm like, I find it weird that your shoes are not on yet because I've asked you a hundred times. I'm like, okay, well there's toys you, right and here. You told me they were on. Yeah. So this yeah. is weird. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. What happened? This is strange because we're, I'm in the car. You guys are still just playing in the house. I don't understand what's going on. And that doesn't even work. It used to work that no, threat. You can't leave them. No, right. exactly. And they know it. They know I'm not going to go anywhere. Bye, mom. And you're like, I'm, look at me. I'm pulling out. Yep. And they're like, okay. Nope. Yeah, and then sorry. you go back and you're like, get in the car. Yeah. We need to move now. <laughs> exactly. So it's something every day. My, yeah. wi- my wife was saying the other day, because again, like having to be somewhere. So I'm like getting home after being in the center for 12 hours. Yeah. And like, so yesterday, Chelsea was going to take Gibbs to football. My son's name is Gibson. And she was like, you know, I have to make some food for work tomorrow or whatever. I'm like. Okay, I, I'm I'm taking the hints. I'll take him to football. No big deal. It's cold out. Like I get it. And so yeah. I literally pulled in the driveway. I had seven minutes, and I'm like Gibbs, get your shoe. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And she's like, "How is it that you can be in a classroom all day?" And I know that you're patient with these kids, but you can't take seven minutes to like. Call. I'm like. I'm just done. Like, yeah. I don't know. Because like, these are my kids. And I, I, can can't, yell yeah, I can yell at these kids. Like, yeah. Somebody yelling at me. I don't know. <laughs> That's so true, man. And, and, you know, like we talk all the time about how we'll do a show on a Friday night and it really sets our weekend up and yeah. we're so much more patient with our own kids. Because mm-hmm. um, we get to talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's the talking right. that really helps us out and it kind of helps you to reset mm-hmm. and be like, okay, big picture here. Mm-hmm. What's most important here? Like right. trying to be a better father uh, and, being more patient. Mm-hmm. That's like the main thing. Right. And it's so hard to do sometimes. Like yeah, I had it's like Wednesday, Thursday, like story time gets real short. And then like Saturday, you have Sunday, Monday. Story time Monday. on Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah. That's impressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, Sunday, Monday. Can't, can't, can't yeah, I'm like, okay, week. you know, like, we'll my, watch some a movie or something. We're going straight to bed. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. kids get, will get, not go to sleep without story time. Mm. They will not. So I mean, but one day I realized I really needed to read uh, Sam a book because... I just put him in his bed. I'm like, I have to get your lunch ready. I have to get all the stuff ready. Liz is at work. So I'm like, just trying to get everything ready. And I have to have my few moments before I fall asleep to just relax. And I hear Sam just in his room, just reading a book, not really reading, but like yeah, trying to yeah. read what he thinks is on the page. You know, I hear him just in there talking and I'm like, what's he doing? So I peek around the side and he's, he's reading, he's got his book open. I'm like, all right. So I go in there. I'm like, let me read this to you. You know, and, spend the 10 minutes that right. you need because that's the most important mm-hmm. thing. And then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go read Ben a story now too. So I just, you know, it's like, Again, but like, that just helped me to mm-hmm. remind myself that this yeah. is what's important. They need mm-hmm. this. Let's try to, you know, cause that's what he wants. You and know? we've said like, this multiple times that 20 minutes that you spent, you got just as much out of it as mm-hmm. they, they got tons out of it. Right. For but sure. like that 20 minutes versus 20 minutes of sitting on the couch watching TV. Cause what, yeah, what am I getting accomplished at that point? Mm-hmm. literally right. nothing. And does it make me feel better? Like it sounds mm-hmm. Not better. really because I'm sitting there. Like we always say, we, when you go to bed and you, you lay your head down and you're like, man, I really regret saying that or doing this or, you know, handling or the situation or this. not doing this. Right. Yeah. Like not reading them a book or mm-hmm. laying with them for 10 minutes. Well, you know, rather not live in regret and just be able to just give those extra 20 minutes. Like you right. said, and just it, it's, you take a lot more from that. I mean, it makes you feel better as a person. Yeah, there's there's a lot related to um, what you are talking about and attachment theory. I don't know if you all are familiar with mm-hmm. it, but zero to three, and there are some um, theorists that talk about like zero to five is the most important time in a child's life and their ability to set them up for really anything. Mm-hmm. So if there is any time in a child's life where we really have to nail it, it is in those times. Mm-hmm. I mean, I believe that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. coming from the early childhood education yes. world, mm-hmm. like that's what we stress to parents is like, you know, the, the, it, uh, I tell my directors, especially who are giving tours all the time and talking to new families and, you know, 
I, we don't say this to parents necessarily, but in a training forum, we say like a lot of what we do is try to uh, minimize guilt. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's silly because I don't think it's founded guilt, but it's there nonetheless where mm -hmm. people think that maybe I'm a less of a parent because I have to send my kid to a center or a babysitter or mm -hmm. whatever, whatever situation mm -hmm. that you're in. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is we live in a very different world today than grandma did because a lot of times that's where it comes from is yeah. how, why are you going to work? You should be staying home with the kids. I get that from a lot of moms. Like, mm -hmm. well, my mom says that I should do this and you know, and I try to explain, like, look, don't look at it as a lesser of two evils. Look at it as you're doing something positive for your child. Um, I say a lot of times, and this is going to really backfire because we talk about how, like, this is our therapy and we're talking to a therapist. But <laughs> <laughs> I say a lot of times, like, we have trained professionals here um, that, like, they literally went to school and they develop the they have dedicated their lives to learning themselves how to teach young children to learn like you could like I use the example a lot of times of like a, a, a nurse like if Steve if I gave you a syringe with a flu vaccine or a flu shot you could administer it to your kid mm -hmm. but would you I, I'd be terrified <laughs> Now, right. for because me, it's... you haven't been trained. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, you could do could it. Could you? But yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I mean, it came down yeah, to yeah. it, should yeah. you? Yeah. Probably right. not. Right. Like, yeah. And that's not saying that we shouldn't be uh, spending time with our kids, but when it comes to the development stages, if we can give our kids uh, an avenue with professionals to prepare them for yeah. the, the later years, why wouldn't you? You know? Absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and again, part of that is salesy. Yeah. You know, I, I'll totally admit that. But there's a lot of truth to it. It doesn't sound salesy. It sounds like that it's what you believe in and have seen in your work. Yes, that's true. So I'm pretty yeah. salesy when it comes to therapy because I believe in it a lot. Uh, yeah. Fair. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you've that's seen fair. it work. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I was so you were saying like the um, the most important years, obviously being this just just for anybody. Um, <laughs> but you said like from zero to five, like those are the, the years you really need to nail it. Now. Um, now, not to say that, like, if you get past that threshold, like that five years, like you, like you could still help out, find some help to make sure that they're not too far gone. Like, you know, what I mean, like going to therapy yeah. or something like that to help a kid that might be somebody who seems like thinks like maybe I didn't do a good job for those first five years, and these kids are going to be stuck this way forever. Like, whereas they could probably seek help, or the parents could probably improve things or change things to try to help out. You know, you know what I'm saying at all? Like, yeah, you know well, I, mean? I mean, to be clear, like from my perspective, when it comes to like the education, like, again, I, I do say it's a little bit salesy because there's thousands and hundreds, millions of children out there who never went to an early childhood education program, sure. went through school just fine. Sure. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm not saying that it's a, a must have or like I think your at fault if you don't, I guess what we use it for is, look, if you're a, a family that's in a situation that you both work or you're a single parent or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and you have to, like, childcare is your option, then we can give you something good to fall back on yeah. to, again, erase guilt, but also make you feel good about doing something. Yeah, like, I mean, it's like, like, it's not a, like the kids are going to be upset that, like, they're not going to hold hold it against you that no. you sent me right. to da no. daycare or whatever. They like, my blast. kids went to your daycares, yeah. and uh, I think it was a great thing for them, you know, to be able to get into that mode of being with teachers and other people. And, and then when they go, and yeah, structure. Social and, mm -hmm. Yeah, social, mm -hmm. being around other kids. Yep. And uh, it helps a lot when they go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, it's not like just, a shock, you know, it's not, I mean, it's, they, they figure it out eventually and it works out, but like, I think daycare is very beneficial for the kids. I, I agree with that. And I mean, like you said, some people have the option to have a babysitter at their yeah. house or, or grandma or, or grandma or, or the, a, parent, a parent, you know, yeah. so, yeah. and that's totally fine. Like, I don't, I don't think there's any, especially today more than ever. Um, 
there's so many resources uh, from an online perspective. Um, there's programs that you can buy. There's YouTube videos, whatever, that you can do more than, you know, what was previously done, which, you know, was either sitting your kids in front of a TV mm -hmm. or, you, you know, Street. hey, you got a you got a block set over there. You should be good for the next four hours. Right. right? Here, here's a bowl of water. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm good. To, yeah, I'm gonna go work. Right. But uh. Yeah, that's another thing too with technology. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, uh. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on? The yeah, Hold um, on. Might, might need first a drink of all, go for ahead. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how to pour okay. this. All right, so sure. um, pour it for it too. So I would say too that um, going back to what you said, like, what what does it look like if there needs to be an intervention after five or six? And honestly, to be fair, most interventions are usually after um, teenage when we really see a lot of stuff going on. There is never like a wrong time yeah. to start to start, obviously. But the reason zero to three and zero to five is such a big deal is because the way in which um, brain growth happens. The mm -hmm. good people say that kids are resilient all the time, and it annoys the shit out of me. It is not true. Kids are not resilient. Kids' brains are more easily damaged by trauma than ours are. The good news is because of their neuroplasticity, they can heal easier. So a child that has experienced trauma or um, something really hard, if you bring them into therapy at five, they may need less time than if you brought them in at 12. Does that mean it's not helpful at 12? Or let's say you were out of the picture um, and then you just come into a situation at 12 as a parent. It doesn't mean that you don't try. It mm -hmm. just means that it may, the, the process looks a little bit longer. Okay. So okay. that's why those age ranges are so important. Okay, so. yeah. I mean, that's, that's the same thing with learning, right? Yes, I mean, it is. Uh, again, that we use the term neuroplasticity all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we have fruit flies. <laughs> oh. um, they like the bourbon too. They well, love I'm the bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Lost another one. <laughs> we got enough. We're fine. We got some good stuff today. Maybe she'll come back. Um, yeah, we use that term all the time because it's the same thing with learning. Like you know, um, with whether. Again, we bring in a lot of a lot of outside agencies mm -hmm. to help, whether it's with speech or mm -hmm. with, um, you know, simple learning or behavior, you know, whatever it is like there's, you know, everything is habitual. So if a child learns bad habits, whether it's um, a communication barrier where they decide that the only way that they can communicate is to hit or to bite, those are very, you know, natural things because yeah. they can't communicate yeah. right and so but they've learned that because no one's taken the time yeah. or or i don't even want to say no one's taken the time or, but no the one's resources and, mm -hmm. yeah, the, and the, or the the resources weren't there uh <clears throat> to help them and so they develop these habits uh -huh. of i get a reaction when i hit this mm -hmm. person even if yeah, it's yeah. negative or attention it's, it's, it's negative attention, attention but yeah. it's attention <laughs> Um, but why does that child need that negative attention, you know? Right. But I, I see you being very protective of guardians and the guilt piece, which I think is really important because when we're in a situation where we feel guilty about our parent, I mean, I probably have today, um, then it just debilitates us. It doesn't make us do better. And so you being really protective of your parents and even the two of you as you parent is it, it just, it is just wasted energy. Now guilt can be a teacher, and it can say, okay, that felt yucky. I don't want to scream at my kid anymore. Um, but it can't inform it. And it sounds like in your your career, you see that a lot. You see parents Tons. feeling very guilty about not doing this or doing this. Yeah. And I mean, I, I think that that comes from people are tired, <laughs> yes. you know? I'm uh, very tired. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, right. right? right. <laughs> I, but I look at like, um, and again, this is a generalization, but it's just what what I see is we have a lot of single moms, mm -hmm. and I cannot fathom being a single parent. Mm -hmm. I, no, I can't. I, I can't even imagine. I have a really hard time, and Chels does like seventy to seventy five percent of the right. Parenting, I, I think there's that's. <laughs> I sit there and I think that I'm like doing so much stuff all the time. And I'm like, man, my wife, we give the wives all the credit in the world because good Lord. I mean, we always say like, it seems like they're more natural when it comes to the, the baby and all that. You know what I mean? Like I, we have a, a three month old. Oh, as well. I didn't know who just had the baby. So that, yeah, Congratulations. That was me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
and I mean, I'm very helpful, but Sucker. she, she, yeah. The Sucker. caveat, I <laughs> yes. am helpful. I am helpful, but I know that she does so much more for the is baby. Is she breastfeeding? Is she, she was, but now we're, um, she had some issues with breastfeeding. So okay. we're, uh, now it's formula. But like at first, yeah, that was like, well, I mean, there's nothing I can do. Her. There's nothing it's, I can do. And we talked about that a yeah. lot too with our, mm-hmm. our kids. Like we tell people like new dads that come on the show or they're about to be a dad. It's like, just understand those first few months, you're just a go, go getter. That's all you, you gotta are. do is like, they're going to yep. tell you what to, she's gonna tell you what to do and you gotta go do it. Yep. It'd be or, three in the morning. Or she's, take, it, take it a step further. If, cause a lot of times they won't tell you what they want. That's yes. true. So you stand in the doorway with a, a handful all. of stuff, bring so it hold, all. hold it all and be like, what, what do you need? Like, it's I the, will help you with anything. Yep, it's the female imploding thing. Yeah. We came back it, around to it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Cause you know, so if you just sit there, sit there and she's going to sit there and hold it all in and she's not going to say, she'll be like, you're fine. You're fine. Eventually it's going to come out right. and oh, it's yeah. going to be, it's not, those are the worst words. It, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Go back to bed. It's, it's like, this whatever. Is, I'm going to pay for this. Yeah, it's, it's, whatever. Whatever. it's whatever. It's whatever. <laughs> is it though? I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to sit next to you while you do it. I, I knew I should have <laughs> yeah, grabbed I, all I, seven your, brands. Rub your back while <laughs> yeah. you're nursing. She's like, don't touch me. I'm like, I'm just going to stand here then. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> my, when my husband and I um, took a, we took one of those classes, the breastfeeding classes where they just like, it's just like seventies videos of women's nipples. Like mm-hmm. that's the whole, the whole class. And it was, like so uncomfortable and then like in one of the old videos it was like and what can the dad do to support and the only thing the dad did in the video was like bring a glass of water and like kind of run away and open the window and so when I was nursing (laughs) my son Miles or Micah went and it was like a really bad night Corey's like do you want the window open? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what they told me to do in the video, honey. I don't know what to do. Like, Learn I don't behavior. Know. Yeah. It's like, here's the water. I'll open the window. Yeah. It's December. Yeah, it was. It was February. Yeah. Keep that window closed. Mm. Yeah, especially dad. Don't mess with the thermostat. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> open in the window. Come on. I'm never going to. Right. It's true, though. I mean, I think that um, there's, well, first of all, for moms, there's so much pressure to breastfeed or don't breastfeed or you know, co-sleep or don't co-sleep or, you know, whatever it is. And and like a lot of times what we say to dads and, or really to anybody who's listening is whatever works. Like, Mm. uh, we have really good friends of ours, um, that in their, I don't want to say culture because they're from here. They've been here all their lives, but like they're Indian and they are very much Mm co-sleepers and it works for them. Mm -hmm great Mm -hmm. like okay cool Mm -hmm. like yeah i understand that like there's a lot of uh, there's there's people that say oh you you should never co-sleep you're going to never give yourself a break and this and that but if it works for you and that's what makes you comfortable fine i don't sleep i don't think there's a lot of black and white in parenting i mean you know don't well, abuse your kid, but right, like, um, right. feed them. <laughs> Don't leave for the store and threaten yeah. and actually leave. Um, but I think that it, um, it goes back to kind of those guilt and shame cycles. If you're like, I will not co-sleep or I will not do this. So my youngest son, Miles, he's three. He actually had a lot of, um, he still has a lot of, he's a, like a really rare allergy disorder. Um, and so he was up most nights in pain and we were like we will not be co-sleepers because we know who we are and we (laughs) ended up being co-sleepers like so so it's it but again it's one of those opportunities like we said we would never let our kids watch our phones during dinner and (laughs) we've also done that Yeah. yeah Um, and so it's just, and just like even in friends, like just being spaces, be like, I get it. That makes total sense for you right now. If people are not doing things that are harmful to them, because parents, as parents, we can do that Mm -hmm. or harmful to their kids. What, like whatever. Yeah. It just, it's absolutely. I mean, it's like, we all been there. Like I know someone who was like, oh, well my son will never watch an iPad, watch YouTube videos or Mm -hmm. whatever. It's like, or Mm -hmm. they won't watch TV. I'm like, all right, we'll see you in a few months. Yeah. (laughs) We'll talk about it then. We'll see how it's going because, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, look, I think that when you find out, or at least this was my experience, you find out that you're going to be a parent and it's exciting and it's terrifying and all this stuff. And then you have this wait period of eight, nine months, 10 months, whatever it ends up being. I don't actually still don't understand the math behind all that, but I don't need to. There's no math on this show. (laughs) Yeah, right. We talked about this. (laughs) You're safe. Don't worry. I think, at least in our experience, we had all these intentions, right? Like, mm. 
we registered and got like the baby bullet. We were going to make all of our oh, own yeah, everything's organic. Gonna be, we're going to steam, we're gonna steam food. the food. Oh, oh no, right. that is Do you terrible. Know baby food? <laughs> right. Yeah. We're going to use squash. cloth or <laughs> organic. Can you believe right. that? <laughs> I will steam my own vegetables. <laughs> I mean, seriously though, oh. like we had these. We ideas. did for a little yeah, bit. Like, yeah, <laughs> not realistic. Like two days. Yeah, I'm like this is a lot of work. A few weeks, like, and we're yeah. like, okay, this like, is not it's happening. Exhausting. We could just there's, go to the store. There's no way. And then when you spend your energy on those things, then you're missing out on like yep. the things that really matter. Yep. And um, that is a gift that I've had in parenting too. And it's one that I think, from my personality type, I have to continue to pay it like pay attention to like am I going toward what I think I should be doing or really the needs of my kids and those things don't always coincide I was absolutely the organic pureed baby food mm -hmm. mom yep. um and it didn't last because it was again I did it for a while and then I wasn't holding my kid you know right. what I mean yeah, or I was spending resenting the, it yeah yes you know because you're exhausted yeah you just yeah six it's hours like, oh, I guess yeah. I'll just go Blending work on the food, food. for an hour and all so. my husband does is open the window <laughs> yeah. so. slides a glass of water here you go sweetie so I mean I'm just kidding he's wonderful he actually works for me too so there you go we're together all the time that's awesome. Um, yeah. So that's what I would say about that. Like, and ha just having friends where you just offer them space and, and just say, dude, it's fine. Like right. it's yeah, cause there's like guilt, that's, right? That's I mean, all like, you want to hear. Absolutely. If you could sit there and tell somebody like, Hey, I know what you're going through. Yeah. What you're doing is fine. You're right. You're great. Yeah. And that's the nice thing too, is when we have guests on and they tell us stories about what they're doing with their kids and I hear it and I'm like, Oh, thank God I'm not losing my mind. Yeah. Right. My kid's not the only one doing this. Yeah. I'm not the only one doing this. Yeah. Like it feels amazing. Mm hmm. To not feel like you're on an island, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's just so nice to just hear all that and uh, mm -hmm. it makes you feel normal. Well, again, <laughs> going back to like the guilt thing, I think yeah. that like... We all have it, right? I mean, you'll mm -hmm. live with constantly mm -hmm. thinking like, did I do this right? Mm -hmm. I should have handled it differently. Could have done like, it better. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm hard on myself in literally every aspect mm -hmm. of life. So Absolutely. So whether yeah. it's, man, that email that I just wrote to that parent could have been better. I could have spent some more time or it's, I could have spent, you know, an extra 20 minutes playing catch with my son or man, I could have done better on that show. Like I could have been, you know, doing a podcast and I could have, you know, whatever. And I don't think it's any different with parenting. And mm -hmm. I think that most people, whether they want to admit it or not, are super hard on themselves because we set this bar or, society has set this bar whether it's through social media where you see everyone's wonderful moments <laughs> you know and if you see and one thing that really irks me is we see we see what i consider to be and maybe i'm wrong and i guess if it does some good it, you know that's great but you see these like pictures or videos of like this is the real me and it's clearly <laughs> staged and it's like a lot of them is like the the fitness stuff where it's like don't believe Instagram and it's like somebody with like a tight six pack and then it's another picture of them clearly like pushing out and like <laughs> slouched over with like a donut in their hand that they've clearly not eaten. Look, yeah. I'm just like, like you. Yeah, right. yeah, like, yeah. Okay, no, bro. no, no one's posting the real them on anything <laughs> right. Right. ever. Like, right. That's all fake. Right. And, and like, and that's fine. And I and I understand the message of it which is good but it's yeah. not authentic but it's not authentic no. and so then i almost like okay well what are we doing here now now we're trying to downplay the fact that we're just superficial people and how can we i, I don't know what the answer i don't know if it's just too much social if it's just too much uh input um, it's it's that feeling is this guilty that i'm posting these the, the positive things so now it's like this is what it's really look, like. Look, I'm so real. Yeah, look right, at me. This right. is my real life but here. It's, it's like, not. But it's not right. though, because you're no. faking that too. Mm -mm. Well, you know because what? the real stuff doesn't get any attention. Right. Which is okay. Like yeah. if, if it makes but you feel good and you have a group of friends that will get interaction from, because that's the only way that you can communicate with other adults. Okay, fine. I get that. Like post okay. away. Like I post pictures of my kids and my dog, you know, whatever. I'm not doing that for fame and everything else. I'm, it's just... Oh, you're not. Something. <laughs> I'm gonna cut it out then. I'm not getting my if, likes. If, if I am, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gone viral yet. I've been trying for years. Right. Feeding um, off my kids. So I, I guess I just said to not like, 
like I think there is a place for social media and I'm, I'm actually a huge proponent of that outlet. But from the influencer standpoint, like I just don't get it. And I think it I think it does a lot of harm. Yeah, for sure. It does, though. I think a lot of that stuff does a ton of harm. I think, I think, they're saying it's they're saying look this is the real me like look my house is so messy and there's six things on the floor and it's it's bullshit and so right. they, they want to be seen as um Normal. authentic yeah <laughs> they want to be seen as authentic but it i i would argue that i think it does damage because i think that people that are really struggling see that and they're like oh my god their bad isn't even my good right one hundred percent. Yeah. The fruit flies are trying to I get know. me. I'm I know trying, he's trying, trying to help and we out. can't catch him. <laughs> um. So Some yeah. Chopsticks. So like it, it's not. There's a level of really deep vulnerability with parenting, and when people like feign it and pretend, look, my house is so messy. Like it's just it's unhelpful. I it's totally it's agree. it's look at my house is so messy. And then they're like the picture of the mess is over here in the corner. But then they show their like. <laughs> they're like right. they're beautiful they're home. They're like, the yeah, they're, yeah, like, it's oh, like yeah. they're just really yeah, set right. up to like, <laughs> right. like how gorgeous they're cleaning lady in the back. But also yeah. look at oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at my wine cellar. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, right. where's the mess? I mean, yeah. Like I don't see it. Yeah. Right. Point it out. So that's what I would say too. Like people who are desperate and and I've I've seen it too in like postpartum clients mm -hmm. in my women, um, and even men. Um, because a lot of times, um, men can be triggered by seeing their wives and partners struggling so deeply and really, truly like we're being silly about it, but not being able to do things and, um, not being able to fix it. And that's a very male. That's a very real yes. thing. Mm -hmm. And so watching your, your person in pain, deep, deep pain and just, you, my argument would be your presence there is remarkably healing but it doesn't feel like that when you're seeing your person in pain right um and so it's just unhelpful when you know you see even an instagram uh do people do instagram is that still what we do i think i i mean I we still don't do, do facebook <laughs> right yeah like i mean uh, no not as much no, but instagram is um, that but instagram's the thing the tiktok's thing. like the oh, new thing you have to make the videos with that and yeah like the real we're, we're trying we try to get oh. to, i mean we, we have yeah. a few videos on oh. there to be fair you've oh. tried yeah <laughs> okay tried. i just put a video out on uh oh we'll have to see grilling that. Mm. on the griddle grill oh. they got yeah. the most views so far the griddle oh. grill so it's a griddle it's this Oh, but big. not like a George Foreman. No, no, no it's like oh, okay. a big flat top. Big oh, flat top. Oh, okay, grill. so it's yeah. impressive. It's not yes. like yeah, exactly. Sad. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, the George Foreman hey, grill was my George Foreman awesome. got me through a lot of years. Yes. It, <laughs> I just I think of the Michael uh, Scott like oh, yeah. office. Oh, that's, yeah. my, so. that's my only connection to the grill is the foot. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. So <laughs> the foot. But but like so for good. example, like you know, even dads posting these things and saying, you know, my wife was really struggling, but you know, look how beautiful she looks today, or something like that. I don't, and I don't know if, if you've seen that on dad's feeds, but like, that's not authentic either. There's right. so much that goes into recovery with postpartum and, um, adding a new kid and just doing life with a kid that impacts your relationship, just the two of you as well. And people don't talk about that either. And sometimes we get so focused on our kids and doing things for these tiny humans that that just is like, not yeah, even on the back. Mm -hmm. back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. <laughs> Did you want to talk about technology? Yeah, we can get oh, into yeah, that. Yeah. Let's do that. What are your thoughts? It's, it, it sucks a little bit. Um, I'm not anti-technology at all. I think that um, NPR came out with a study, or they were talking about a study, um, probably two or three years ago about how, um, you know, we are just starting to see um, probably like high school age kids now, they were like the the kids that started learning mm -hmm. on technology like that. That's the newer thing. I don't, I don't know how, how old are we? When did we graduate? Uh, uh, we're, we're probably, I graduated in 2003. Three. Yeah. Okay. I was 2005. Okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah. so we had like, I remember having some technology, but not yeah, really. We had like, we had our phones where we could, we had computer yeah, yeah. We had computer lab. Yeah. Number yeah. Launchers. Yes. So these kids, <laughs> bricklayer was on the computer. Yeah, okay. Bricklayer, <laughs> Oregon trail. <laughs> Yeah. Then, a lot. You know you can play the old version. Oh, I know. Okay. So good. All right. Really? Just, I just, oh, you can just... go online and play the old version. <laughs> All right. You'll still die of dysentery every, yeah, every time. time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <My> oxen. <laughs> Died again. Well, you well, 
Is that the only option? Oxen? Are there no, horses? There's, there's, Maybe there's, you need to do horses. I could do horses. My oxen died quite a bit. Huh. Did they get dysentery? <laughs> Probably. I feel like okay. we should, is Twitch still a thing, by the way? What's Twitch? Twitch, oh, is, Twitch like is like where people like, stream video games. Oh, oh, oh. We yes. should totally get Oregon put Trail. Oregon and trail. do Oregon Trail. Mm-hmm. I bet we can get all kinds of maybe that would make you viral (laughs) maybe that would be that's it that's it we figured it out thank you hey all right let's wrap it up thanks thanks for coming in we got some games to play oh my god (laughs) all right sorry okay um so they came out with this study about how brain damage actually starts at um two hours a day of use which is yucky and scary and (laughs) there's so much brain damage well listen not for us, it's, it's okay, okay, whatever. Okay. The kids, all right? <laughs> so brains are fully formed by 25, right. and they're even looking to see, like, pushing up adolescence to, like, 30. So some of us have only been in it for, like, a year or two. <laughs> um, so anyhow, um, it, it's it's a big deal. And how I see it on my end in my clinical practice is the behavioral issues it ends up causing. Um, I think it's silly to think that, we shouldn't integrate it as parents. I don't think we, we watch TV, we play video games at my house. Um, but the, the impact it has on like social, emotional and mental health issues is big. And, um, we see a lot of, again, it's, it's a gift in so many ways. So we, my practice shut down in like the height of COVID and we were shut down for, I don't know. I, what is time anymore? Yeah, I, I don't have, even know. I have no 2020 wasn't even a year. Yeah, I, have, right. I don't even know. That's just, Skipped on the calendar. Yeah, and it's almost 2022. Yeah, I know. That's very that. crazy. It's 92 <sighs> days till Christmas, actually. Right. So it's Countdown's fine. begun. It's fine. So, <laughs> um, but, you know, technology is a huge... It gives us the ability to, like, I saw most of my clients virtually. Right. And even some of my three and four-year-olds, because I've got kids yeah. that little. So it was an incredible gift. Um, but um, the maintenance of it can, um, be very difficult as a parent and it can lead back to the guilt. So it's, it's kind of like holding those things in place of like, this is, this is a major deal. We need to monitor this, but also there's going to be days where you're going to watch Bluey for nine hours right. because yeah, I mean, in the middle of the ma- winter, there's nothing else to, do. to watch Bluey. For yeah. Nine hours. Right. So, um, I think it's holding both those things. So that's what I would say about technology. There's a lot of really, really good books out there, um, about it, but I do get concerned sometimes when you consume a lot of the books about it, then the guilt starts that's to really play. Start yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh crap, my kid can never watch anything. Right. Right. So, so yeah, when you start diving really deep into it, you're like, okay, well I got to cut off everything. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I think there's a, there's a healthy amount of time, like you said, that mm-hmm. you could do it, but would you say like two hours of technology technology I'm oh, sorry. so sorry no i mean so my son ben could just if he had his ipad and he could just watch videos he yep. would do it for mm-hmm. the rest of his life yeah mine too whereas sam I, will be like he will start like i'm like i just need to like a, like an hour so i can just like lay down well yeah. my wife's at work i'm like just go ahead and watch some videos right. or play games right no, he does it for 10 minutes and, and then he's, he's like, he's in, he's in my face. Like, let's go do this. I'm like, buddy, I just wanted like, just oh, like a half video. hour so I can just relax. Maybe close my eyes for a minute. Mm-hmm. Like, but which is great. But like, there is some advantages to the, tech, the technology, right? I mean, there's some good games Absolutely. that you can be playing and things like that. So, I mean, I never know what the right answer is. I, I don't I, think there is one. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we don't know, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you're starting to see, like she said, the studies of the high school yeah. kids now. You're starting to see there's actually something behind it where you could actually... Yeah. There's some data. Figures, sure. Yeah, there's some data behind it, so you could but, look at it. So, sorry, go ahead. number one, Bluey's fantastic. Oh my god, love Bluey. I don't care about any cartoons outside of Bluey. Bluey's so good. I don't give a shit about <laughs> Those anything. Those dogs are the best. Do you know that they have the um the soundtrack on Spotify? I did not. Okay, well, well there know. you go. That's now, now well, now, oh yeah, it's lovely. Um, <laughs> second of all, I am just like Ben. Put an iPad in front of me with nothing else to do for 10 yep. hours. I will yep. totally binge whatever. Absolutely. Um, my thoughts are, and, and maybe this is a justification, is that I see the world that we're in today versus even five years ago. Mm-hmm. To where it's like you said, you're seeing clients virtually. Um, I know. Meeting, in, work meetings. We meet all the time virtually yeah like we have seven centers we used to whoa yeah okay yeah busy busy it's a lot of ladies that yeah. i'm with <laughs> <laughs> um we used to meet 
once, maybe twice a week in person, that's seven people that are getting out of their buildings yeah. and spending half hour drive time and getting together. And then we're together. You know what I mean? Like it saves a lot of time and it's fiscally like very advantageous for us to just hop on a Microsoft Teams meeting and get what we need to get done. Um, and virtual doctor's appointments. Uh, I sure, mean, it, yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of good things, you know. Yeah. So I guess like e even from five years ago, I see where we're going. Um, and sometimes the justification that I use is, look, our kids are going to need to have these skills to be able to use, you know, Zoom or whatever. Like my kid did kindergarten on Zoom most yeah. of the year yeah. last year, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we mm -hmm. thought that that was going to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it turns out they were very used to looking at an iPad mm -hmm. and it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Right. Um, not preferred, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Like we got through it and like he, he still like, according to standardized tests and things like that still did well at what he was supposed to do for kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was brand new for everyone, right? Like we had never done that with little kids on sc at scale. Um, right. COVID pushed us into it and, and that's what we did. Right. And, and we, we had a bunch of conversations last year about that is how it was more of an adjustment for parents than it was for the kids. Not only that, like is how it's convenient and yet very difficult mm -hmm. because having your kids home with you when you're trying sure. to, like for you, you work from home. Right. So like, well, in theory, uh, in theory, <laughs> yeah, you weren't working those days. Like I wasn't home. So yeah. like I, um, that's got to be so difficult as a parent to be like, okay, get in front of that, that iPad or that computer because your teacher's talking to you right now. They're in the other room there. You have a computer, but then you have everything else. Your house is right here with everything that you want to do. Snacks, games, toys. Like, it's like, man, just try to focus on You're trying to tell your kids to pay attention. I mean, we're talking like junior kindergarten at the time for right. Sam and Ben. Like right. it's like, yeah, but they did it though. They did fine. But it was right. like, but the the there's a lot more distraction and the for them. expectation and for them. The expectation too. It's to like, manage. hey, here, you guys were in a classroom, but today you're staying you're staying home for God knows how so long. It turns out for a while. You, for a long time, yeah. and you're gonna learn yeah. off this computer. And I mean, it worked out. It worked fine, and it was great. It was a great thing. Um, it just makes it a little more difficult for parents that have to deal with it. Like and it's like, I, yeah, because I'm like, okay, well, we got to figure out babysitters. We got to figure mm. out because I have to work wife has to work like we can't just be home all the you're, time you're absolutely right that was like the hardest part and i love my in-laws to death because they're they do so much for us when we were doing virtual learning and we had to go over there and set up my son for kindergarten that was more stressful than yeah just having him at home oh for sure because i mean because i had to teach them how to teach him <laughs> how to hit to, the, to the, what mute button, button, yeah, the mute yeah. button and everything you know to figure I mean? it out like, um, and, and you know, that's a lot it, again, but I guess that's almost my point is that I don't know if it's, it's gotta be directly related in some form that they've used the phones, they've used the iPads growing up that they were able to grasp those yeah, concepts they're more adaptive. so much easier. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think that just goes back to the whole thing with the amount of time they spend on it. Right. It like does. that's, yeah. that's, that's the, that's the big thing. I think it's. Everything in moderation, right? It's, it goes right. the same thing with like with snacking or like, yeah, uh, whatever, like playing with a certain toy. Or like you know, it's just everything in moderation is healthy, healthier, right? Instead of being like, all right, here's I got to work, so here's six hours on the iPad for you, like. And that's almost that's as unhealthy as parents that are not allowing any access, because the the nature of our world is a technology based right. world, and that's not sure. going to go away. No, right. it's only going to advance, right? And so. What we do, just like when we expose our kids to, you know, sugar or snacks or something like that, we don't say you can't have this. We just say this is a tool. This is when we eat this. This is what this looks like. Yeah. Right. So if you, I, I have friends and some clients that um, are more in the realm of like no TV ever. And I'm just like, I, like, I, 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 I it sounds like you're afraid of what's going to happen if they're exposed to technology, but turns out they're going to be, and then they're not going to know how to use it. Yeah, and right. that's dangerous. I mean, think it about like dangerous. when yeah. you were in second grade, first grade, whatever. If somebody would have put a magic box in front of you and said, "This is how you're learning," we would have been lost. Right? Oh, we had no idea what the right. hell's going on. Right? Like, yeah, it'd have been uh, terrifying. Right? Because that's just but not our kids were able to adapt because easily. we exposed them. Yes, exactly. Very easily. I, I don't even want to say adapt. They like 
they just they get uh, yeah. it. They, I mean, they so, did. some levels thrive. Yeah, for sure, for sure. There's a lot of benefits to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and like you said, the same thing with like sugar or snacks or anything like that. It's like, okay, you cannot have this. But eventually, these kids are going to go to their friend's house. Eventually, like, or go to go to, to school. School, yeah. And, or daycare and be like, hey, here's yeah. your apple juice. Like, well, I've never had that. Like, it's going to happen. Yep. They're going to get it. Yep. And not only that, they're going to be like, holy shit, this yeah. is awesome. Ah, it's like, a, it's like, throw up. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Right, right. And they're going to be, like, and and be freaking out. Like, mm-hmm. we need this. Like, they're going to, like, mm-hmm. it's like a drug. Like, yeah, it's like the it sugar. Is. I need it the is. sugar. Yeah. Like, so. Sugar recently is 100% we, a drug. Oh, 100%. That's why it's, that's that's like my favorite that's drug. That's why it's good. Yeah. That's why it's the best. <laughs> We're all addicted to it. I love salty things, though. I have chips. Me too. I don't, care. Like I don't care about brownies at all. No, I will get Nothing. into a bag of chips and just crush it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, my son, both my kids, like, they love their snacks, right? So, uh, my, my wife loves cereal. Mm. Okay. She likes the good cereal. Mm-hmm. Well, the kids love it, What's too. What's the good cereal? Like, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Oh, the name like, brand. Like the good stuff. Wow. Yeah, I know. She's mm. fancy. fancy. Mm. I'm not a big cereal cereal person mm. myself, um, but the kids love it, and they're getting all the sugar and everything. Then we have, like, fruit snacks, and, like, now it's to the point where they're, like, they get home from school, and they go straight to the pantry, and they're, like, where's this snack? So what we started doing is we hid every sugary treat and all the good snacks, and we put them, we hid them away from them. So, like, Sam comes home yesterday. He's, like, I need, I need, uh, cookies say no they're in here we're like i'm like no there's not and he's looking around checking everything out can't find them he goes all right he's like can we have spaghetti and meatballs i'm like absolutely <laughs> that quick it worked mm-hmm. <laughs> like gave him those carbs huh yeah those carbs, carbs are bad man <laughs> <laughs> carbs are the worst man so my kids are now we're going moving to, we're, now we're moving to keto <laughs> So it's keto diet for us. Yeah. Out. So we're going to go, we're going to start doing wings and things like that. Instead. I'm just kidding. But like, that's, but that's what it is though. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. like you're going to find something wrong with yeah. everything. Right. Uh-huh. But I just yeah. think that we were trying to get them away from some of these, oh, it's, these treats. Cause like, then you start looking at it like, oh, there's red 40 or, mm-hmm. or yellow, whatever, you know, all those different things that when you look into it, those things are very harmful sure. as far as like, it is mm-hmm. like for their brains too, like mm-hmm. just the way they act and everything like that. So I'm like, maybe, so let's try switching things up a little bit. Let's get a little yeah. more natural with things. Get those chemicals out of their diet. So you can have, uh, you know, fruit snacks when your teacher brings them in or something like that. Like there's a a reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. So make uh, it, make it like a, like a a gift or like something, something special. Whereas it's not just the norm. Like you're going to come home and you're going to get like Oreos and fruit snacks or something like that. So, right. So I just thought of this. My confession for the show is that, um, it must've been like two years ago. Gibson was in junior kindergarten and he had some, he had some big feelings. Yeah. Like to use his hands a little we bit. We call those <laughs> deeply feeling child. Uh, yeah. I he have was one, one of those. those. Yeah. <laughs> um, like everything's a feeling. <laughs> right. Like get in the car. Right. Like we don't need to process your right. feelings. <laughs> yeah. I don't have time for your feelings. Because uh, I'm going to leave you. Yeah. I'm actually <laughs> right, right. in the car. Right. Um, but so like there was some, some stuff where he was handsy with some other friends mm-hmm. and you know, so teachers talking to us. And so I'm trying to think of ways to motivate him and I turn to gummy snacks, like gummy worms and things like that. I'm like, look, dude, we have some gummy worms in the truck. When I pick you up from school, as long as you had a good day, you get a couple gummy worms. Two years later, like I picked them up from <laughs> school and they're both of them. I'm like, would you have our gummies? I'm like, what have I created here? Well, yeah, you have to have the treats all the time then, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just now thinking of this though. <laughs> okay. It's been... Really, like a month since I've been able to pick them up from, well, since they really started school. I've picked them up a handful of times I've been able to get out. But they haven't, you know, grandma and grandpa are picking them up, which I guess then they're just like getting McDonald's probably. But Oh, my God. Uh, I'm but when my wife picks up, right they don't have, she doesn't have the snacks in her car, you know? Yeah. So, like, my big goal right now is when I get back to normal, I'm not going to have the gummies. Good. I've, I've gotten away from the snacks after school. Mm-hmm. Cause I used to have like same thing in my car. Yeah. Like as soon as Sam got in the car, I'm like, here's a bag of Doritos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and like the last month I've been picking them up. He's like, where's my snack? I'm like, when we get home, we're going to eat dinner. Right. And that's what our snack is. We're eating dinner. That's what you're going to eat. Like mm-hmm. not, we're going to have a bunch of little treats before dinner. And then you're going to sit there and be like, Oh, my tummy hurts. I don't want to eat. I'm like, no, we're eating. We're going to mm-hmm. eat dinner tonight. That's what yeah. we're doing. So it's actually been working. He got in the car today. He was pretty pissed off at me about not having a snack. And I'm like, well, Hey buddy. It's time for dinner. But again, so. going back to the like 
neuroplasticity like it's very quick that they forget about those things for sure like um, i said we're just, we're in the beginning of the getting rid of all the the snacks like right. all the the fun yeah, treats they adjust. and he'll yeah. they'll just do it like it, actually this morning he goes because if he wakes up before me he would just go straight into the kitchen and grab like whatever like a cookie or something the like chocolate that milk. the chocolate milk yeah that was a thing okay. uh my son would like say that in the middle of the night to me like I, one night i woke up and he was standing next to my bed and he just goes Give me the chocolate milk. He was like three or two or three. Imagine. It was terrifying. Were, it was like a horror movie. Black? No, thank God. I, I checked. Okay. I had the flashlight. I'm like, he's fine. I'm like, I'm not getting it's three. Go to bed. Um, but <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got distracted by the chocolate milk sorry. thing. It's like one of my favorite stories. It's that so you good. Ever told it was me, so, so creepy. Did you get it for him? No, that oh. night it was just go straight back to bed. We're not having chocolate milk at three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen a lot of scary movies and I said from day one, I'm like, when I have kids, I swear to God, like the scariest thing to me is like those scary movies where there's like a little girl mm. in her little nightgown and she's like standing in the middle of the hallway, like looking in the doorway at you like. Sloan does that. It's terrifying to me. My daughter, she. That's not okay. <laughs> it's terrifying. <sighs> she just stands in the door and then I'll, like I just like wake up because I feel her eyes on Yeah, me. Yeah, you can feel it. Your soul's like, being looked at. Yeah. Sloan, what's going on? She's like, I want to hug. I'm like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Now, by hug, do you mean you're going to strangle me? or yeah. Like my neck. Go to yeah. bed now, please. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, my kids gummies. don't wake me. Yeah. Throwing no, gummies yeah, at her. Start. Go. 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 No. My dad is sleep scared. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But the but the thing is, though, like, they're looking for these snacks, and like he's like, okay, I guess I'll just grab a banana. Like, yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Or an apple. They well, love they their, my kids love their fruit and vegetables. Yeah. At least the, the fruit is like enough sugar to hold them over. Like yeah. it's like, okay, this is still sweet. So let's go with a yeah. strawberry or something like that. So it's been working. Well, and again, not to like, cause I don't want to feel guilty about making a choice to try to correct some like physical behavior. Gummies were fine. Like they're going to be okay. Maybe we'll just limit it. Maybe I'll just do it on Fridays. Yeah. We moved our, my, I had, um, my six year old is the kind that sneaks out of his room in the middle of the night doing these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, that's problematic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, there's a really good, um, nutritionist on Instagram. Cause apparently that's the platform we mm. use, um, <laughs> called kids eat in color. And she's very, very, I can send it to you. She's very much at like no guilt dietitian like she's not like these are the expectations she's like you do what you can these are healthy choices if you have these choices in your house that's fine if that's all you can do she's excellent but she talked about like moving to treat days now that doesn't mean if they're at a birthday party like yeah it's micah it's not treat day you can't have any cake all the other kids will but you can't right (laughs) but it goes back to that like neurodevelopment piece of if they can anticipate what's going to happen, then, then the stress of it goes away. Sure. So not that I'm not ever in kids, you guys brought up kids have no sense of time, which is very irritating for us. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but if Micah knows that treat day in our house, it's Wednesdays and Thursdays, he, um, is less obsessed with when it's going to happen next because okay, he like knows that. it's on those days. We tried one day a week and he was not interested in the so one day a week option. Two's good. Two's a good so two's good. Okay. Um, and he really doesn't ask outside of it. And we'll, you know, we'll bring stuff in the house every once in a while. We're not like, it's not Tuesday or it's not Wednesday, right. but we moved it to it's on the schedule. So he knows. So you um, could do structure. that with your kids and yeah, say, I like if that. I, you know, if I pick you up on this day, then I'll make sure I have gummies in my car. Right. So it kind of started that a little bit with uh, Sam is like, I'd take him to school on Fridays. And I'm like, okay, well, we will go to Pulp, and I'll get you a smoothie in the morning for breakfast. And that's become like a thing. Like he, when he, when Friday comes around, he's like, well, get a smoothie. I'm like, yeah, he knows. Like he doesn't he doesn't ask any other day about the rest of the week, right? Yeah. right, right. But on Friday, knows. he knows that's mm-hmm. great. That's the day to get mm-hmm. the smoothies. Like I woke up this morning, grabbed some smoothies. There was a little issue where I got Sam the orange smoothie, which he really likes, and I got Ben strawberry and banana. Well, then they got how cause dare a big, you? Yeah, well, exactly. I should have got two orange. It's abusive. I should know that. I have to get yeah. the same thing yeah. for both of them That's because it's just, mistake, it's a, bro. Oh, yeah, stupid. That. I'm like, That's okay. Ben loves You'll strawberry banana. Oh, I did. You'll learn from it. <laughs> you thought, you thought, I, thought I nailed it. Really I'm like, dude, I, I woke up <laughs> extra early. I went out and grabbed this stuff. So when they wake up, the smoothies are on the table. No, nope, not, they, not good enough. They just victimize us. Like, they my do. Husband they talk, really like, do. I feel violated by oh, that. Like, all the time. It's so like, like raise your hand. Yeah, you, want to, been you, you want to talk about, yes, today. right? Yes. yes. Like, the guilt God. comes from yeah. the children. Yeah, right. They make you pulp. feel it. Man, they Ugh. make you feel that. <laughs> you know, funny story about pulp. And I love pulp. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of sugar. All the time. It, tons of sugar, but it's so it's good. It's just sherbet. 
Um, well, so well, basically I don't get the Sherbert ones. I get the. Uh, those are the good ones, though. I know. Those are the better okay. ones. I get the, uh, kale Kapow, though. The Kale Kapow is pretty good. But that's that Sherbert. That sounds gross. A lot of sh- it sounds disgusting, and I don't it's like really kale. Good. I don't like kale. But the, the mango the and the Sherbert oh. really takes oh, over the taste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's kale, so it's perfectly Give me that fine. Ice cream kale one. <laughs> no, I get that uh, protein packer one that's just protein like bananas really good. and chocolate and oh. like um, that's yummy. peanut butter. Yeah. The great. girls got smart at the Willoughby one, by the way. I go there at 6.30 in the morning to get my protein packer every now and then, and they have like five of them already made up because oh, that's like the they? popular one in the wow. morning. Like there's like five people that come in there every day for the protein packer. They're like, oh, so there you go. I, again, I don't normally get the sherbet ones or the fruit ones. Uh, I'm in there with Gibson between football games one day, and the person in front of us ordered a mango bomb. And Gibbs is like, oh, I want a mango bomb. I'm like, Hey man, whatever you want. Oh, no. Get a kid sized mango bomb. Doesn't like mango? Sure. Do you know what's in a mango bomb? Uh, An put, entire can of Red Bull. Oh, they put oh. the Red Bull in there without. Oh, you probably. Because the mango bomb's off the. It's a 16 year old girl making it. It's, she doesn't it's, know that she can't get a 6 year old. It's off of the energy one. <laughs> that's Dad, why. This is amazing. And I like, try it. I'm like, that's 100% Red Bull. Yeah, he's just. <laughs> On the ceiling, running around in the car, like, yeah. dude, why haven't you stopped this moving? Is I mean, he school. was really f- no. This is between oh. football games. Oh, that's good. Oh, okay. He was so fast. Well, oh, well there you go. Maybe that's game. your secret, now. Yeah, it's just Red Bull. All right, buddy, you're gonna have a good game today. Just pouring game, a Red Bull game. into his water bottle. There you go. So now I have to go up there with him because he wants a mango bomb. I'm like, hey, can you get me a mango tango? But call it a mango bomb. They're yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Cool. I've had wow. to do that before, where I had to Shout tell them to, to for change their names, change the names. I've had to do that before. Like Sam wanted a. A blueberry icy. That's mm. not an option. It's blue raspberry. I'm like, well, you get blue raspberry. It's blue. He's like, no, no, it's got to be blueberry. I'm like, I'm arguing with my three year old and the or four year old at the time about it. And he's like, it has to be blueberry. So I get to the window. I'm like, listen, just just when I order this, just say it's blueberry. She goes, okay, and one small blueberry. I'm like, thank you. Here's an extra dollar. Like <laughs> that would have meant everything because if yeah. it was blue raspberry, he knew that. Was yeah. what it was named? He wouldn't. Have, he wouldn't. Have, Not okay. No, he wouldn't have drank it. He just sat in his <laughs> cup holder and he just been pissed off the whole time. I mean, I don't blame him. Right. I mean, God damn it. I mean, blue raspberry sucks. Blue I raspberry w- is disgusting. It's not even. That's not a thing. That's it's not, not even a thing. thing. Blue right. raspberry right. is not it's a thing. Not not. But think about that. Jolly that's Ranchers is blue raspberry. Flavor. The yes, this is one hundred percent artificial flavor. It's just raspberry with blue. It's just corn. But why would they just do blue raspberry? Why is that even an option? Because it sounds better than blueberry. Yeah, blueberry. Blueberry yeah. doesn't sound good as a icy as a flavor. No, it's not. Did, a does flavor. anyone get excited about? Blueberry? No, I'm, I'll have the blueberry, please. Oh, apparently, my four year old did. <laughs> but that actually brings up the question, though: is why did they feel the need to make the raspberry flavored <laughs> flavor blue? Blue? I don't know. Mm. Why couldn't it just be red? Like because it's a universal thing, cherry. though. It's like well, that sounds like a dissertation. <laughs> we have to get into this a little bit. Mm. Let's Listen, do some I research. Quit a long time ago. <laughs> I'll just talk about it. It's gonna audio book, okay? On blue raspberry, the history of blue raspberry. Where did it come it from? Interesting. I actually probably will look up. Yeah, I, was, I have to know <laughs> now. Now I kind of need to know. Yeah. Where's my damn phone? I need to Google this. So, I have a question um, about your practice, or or as a professional. Um, we again deal with a lot of parents and and. I kind of want to get off the guilt thing, but it's hard a lot of times to convince a parent to seek help or, or even accept help. Right. Cause Mm -hmm. we, we bring, you know, organizations like Crossroads and all Mm -hmm. time and they're wonderful Mm -hmm. and they'll do classroom, um, sessions. They'll do individual child session and they do sessions with our teachers too. That's awesome. It's fantastic. That's wonderful. Um, I didn't know they did that. Oh, it's, it's great. A lot of times we have problems uh or or struggles getting parents to accept Mm -hmm. that anything could possibly be i don't want to say wrong i want to say um i don't don't even know what the and this is a a big problem is that i don't even know how to approach that i mean because it's it's hard to tell somebody that hey i think you need to seek professional help right they try to tell somebody that that's it can be embarrassing. Yeah, absolutely. Because nobody what wants it to. Because mm-hmm. no, I mean, imagine being there in that situation, and someone tells you that that's just like 
on top of yeah. everything else that you just dealt with right. today. Yes, now and, my then, kids and now you hear the teacher work was is good. saying, right. your yeah. kid needs a therapist. Right. Yeah, like you hear, you hear that. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Now trying to be the person that's going to tell them, that's very difficult. Mm. Yeah. Because how do you approach that? Right. That's like... I, I wish we could get back. And, and they, they, they give us good... Uh, and by us, I mean my teachers, because the teachers have the relationships with the parents more than certainly I do. Um, so they do a good job of of managing that as best as they can. But sometimes I feel like when they can't get through, it's either just a, you know, I hate to go through the, well, your child can't continue here. Yeah, if, because this is the consequence. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and a lot of times that's the reality Yeah. because yeah. at the end of the day, it's not fair to the other kids mm-hmm. in the classroom. It's not fair to my teachers. It's not fair to that child because we're clearly mm-hmm. not the right place for that mm-hmm. child. And, and we try to stress that, that, mm-hmm. and, and, and still no parent ever wants to hear that because at the end of the day, they just want somewhere to, that their kid's going to be safe. Absolutely. That's clearly not their focus at the moment. Their focus is getting through work and I have so much empathy for that. I get it. Um, But when it becomes an issue of safety or of um, making sure that we're providing what we promise to everyone else in the room, it becomes a difficult conversation. Well, because it's it's a community. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, there are certain things that have to be in place because it's a community. Right. Um, I guess what my initial question was is like, what would you want a client to ask you Mm -hmm. or a parent, uh, you know, specifically towards children. Like if you have, if you're working with a four or six year old or, or whatever, what are the questions that you want to be asked? Like, or, or are there, or is it just so different with every child? I don't know, but like, is there certain things that we could be asking our parents, um, to kind of break that barrier down of, do you think like, Because a lot of times we say, does he have these behavior problems at home? And the answer is always no, right? But, like, they're also probably not interacting with other children at home. Mm -hmm. um, Or they're on their iPads all night. Or they're on their iPads. Yeah, they're not in a structured environment. Sure. Either. I mean, you could, but, like, probably. Right, but it might not. It might backfire a little bit, yeah. (laughs) Bad reviews coming soon. Maybe if you got your kid off their iPad. (laughs) Yeah. Like, oh. No, don't do that. Bad review coming soon. (laughs) That's that's for sure. Right, right. (laughs) I don't know. Like, I I feel like there's got to be some some questions or some things that we could – implement to break that barrier of conversation down to say this is okay yeah um and and i don't know what those are and again crossroads helps us a lot out a lot with those things but really in our like our hands are tied like we can't make referrals okay um we have to convince mom or dad the guardian or the guardian Mm -hmm. to access to yes to request and there's a big leap between you saying something and then, Huge. yeah. Taking action. Right. So the first thing I would say is that changing the narrative of your child needs counseling to your child deserves counseling is a mm. big deal. Mm. That's big. Wow. Yeah. I like that. And you need support as a parent because things are going, you know, sideways for your child and you deserve support. You're exhausted. You're overwhelmed. And that's typically the conversation we have with our parents that we notice are like really on the fence and they're frustrated that they're there and they don't want to hear another person telling them what they're not doing. Right. It's usually like, look, this is really hard situation. It's, it's the, it's really the opposite narrative of the guilt narrative of like, you have got to be so exhausted coming right from work to picking him up to going home to trying to get food. You deserve support. So changing that narrative is a huge deal. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really by good. By the way, that's not like even stretching truth. No, that's it's not. 100% every, accurate. Every human deserves therapy or support. It, it absolutely is. I love that. Okay. okay. No. Deserve. Wow. No. Your work is done. You're good. Yeah, you're no. really. This should be like a weekly segment. I can I can do. You come back. Or maybe not weekly, but maybe monthly. If I mean, I don't want to waste any of your time. <laughs> we appreciate that. I'll be here. You got to get rid of these damn fruit flies. <laughs> I know. 
Oh, we're working on it. Did we set a trap last week? <laughs> Did you guys say that at the same time? Yeah, we we we, we're, 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 synced. we're synced. Yeah, for sure. That's a thing. <laughs> okay. That's a thing. Okay. Even after a long break, we've been friends yeah. for a long time and yeah. spent a lot of time we've together. We've noticed so. that we're like four. Yeah. That's yeah, cute. So it's That's very cute. Really cute. Yeah. yeah. We bring that up all the time. How cute we are. <laughs> Super cute. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. And, and that, that's actually been powerful even in um, like family members that have come to me and said, it's really interesting. It's really interesting being a therapist. And a lot of people will be like, yeah, therapy is great for other people. And you're like, okay, so you don't actually believe in what I do. It's fine. <laughs> Mom. Um, any- <laughs> right. <laughs> you don't need that. <laughs> Anyhow, it's a true story. <laughs> Rough year. Anyhow, so, um, but just changing that dynamic, and that's actually how I've been able to get some of my friends into accessing support. Like, look, you you deserve this as, as a human. This isn't about a failure or going in and being like, hey, this is what I feel like I'm doing wrong. Can you give me perspective? No, you deserve it as a living, breathing human. And I can't imagine never being a, been a single parent. I mean, I basically am because I was a nursing mom and well, and we well, yeah, open window. Right, window. That's right, all we can right. do. But outside of that, <laughs> I have a very, very supportive partner. And, but I can't imagine as a single parent going and picking my kid up after a really long day. Cause I'm sure they're all working, working moms. Yes. And someone saying you deserve this. I no. mean, like when else have they heard? Have they probably, probably heard probably that? Never. No, sure. Probably that's such never. a good way. That's just, that's amazing. That's such a good message for anybody. Yeah. Like anybody that's listening to this, like yeah. that's phenomenal because you don't hear it. Like you said, that's yeah. something we never really hear. Mm-hmm. It's I usually mean, like, because usually when somebody says you may want to seek therapy for your child, it's like, okay, you're instantly, doing something wrong. instantly you're like, yeah, what you're the fuck? What did I, yeah. what did I do? Yeah. I fucked this up. Right. I, I really screwed my child up. And now I'm embarrassed. Now I'm embarrassed. And now, and now, now it's like, kicked out. Yep. And like, okay, Can't do I have come to, back here? Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to mm-hmm. talk to anybody else about this. Like this, I'm, I'm crazy. Like, right. You know, so I think uh, even if, and a good message too is like, I think that we talked about this earlier about getting to that point where you maybe realize, if, even if someone doesn't tell you, but you have a feeling that maybe my child needs some type of therapy and you go, why don't I just go and try, see if it mm-hmm. is something that is really needed. Maybe they don't at all. And maybe, but it, it's worth it to just get it checked out. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like anything like with your health too. It's like, mm-hmm. why not just, it is your get health. It, let's get it, it, is get it. Health, it is right? your health. Right. Absolutely. Right. Like get ahead of it, right? So, so that that's before a, it's too late. Exactly, and that's a great that's a great like merging point of what you're saying. This is this is not you going and getting support that you deserve as a single mom, and you know what your son or daughter deserves as a child is actually taking care of their body. So this is like a holistic, and I was listening to the one episode that you guys were talking about with like holistic health. Like this is a holistic thing. Our mind is part of our body, right. the, one of the most important parts of our body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so normalizing it, I would also say that too, that look like you deserve this and it makes sense that, yeah. that this this needs to come into play. Those have been like my two, my two like sales pitches mm-hmm. for people. Um, and trying to get them to access that. So I like I like the deserve, and I really like this focusing on support. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. that's I think all it is. Steve and I, especially over the last several months, have gotten into this like little group of ours that is literally so supportive, um, and most of it has been centered around our own health. Because mm-hmm. um, towards the end of last, like. I don't know, when we were finishing up last season, Mm -hmm. we started to, for whatever reason, dumb luck, I don't know, got some some guys in here that were talking about health and wellness Mm. and things like that. And, you know, that's just like a a fortunate thing that happened. I don't know that we were seeking it out, but like I know for me, it got me thinking and, and that's when I took the time off, I tried to do some things to improve health and and was pretty successful. And and I think that most of that is due to the support of this group that we have. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and and that's the same thing with parenting, right? I mm-hmm. mean, that's the reason we started this show was mm-hmm. because him and I were able to support each other. Um, and we quickly realized that there are, we have friends that like had kids before us that never had anybody yeah. to talk to. I mean, who you know, you can't talk to your mom or your dad, your mom doesn't even believe in what you do. Like, right. yeah, <laughs> she doesn't. Yeah, it's true. Man. Uh, well, no, we, didn't, like, we didn't do that when I was, it's like, that's right, fine, but right. this is what I'm doing. Right. right. Like, so, with it, 
right. <laughs> it's, yeah. just, it's a different time. I'm sorry. Ass. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no, like, <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. We yeah. didn't have this Suck issue. I never had this issue. It's like, well, this is, this child's different than I was. No, so, you like, just ignored it. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm crazy, mom. Lynn. Okay. That's why I never lived up to my potential. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still never been good enough. This is going a very dark place. Uh, <laughs> Damn parents. Uh, we, all have, we all have issues. But no, I, yeah. I, I think support is an, such a simple term that is often overlooked. I know I overlooked it for the first however many years of my, you know, mm-hmm. I, I still don't know that I fully understand the um, advantages of support. Like I'm starting to understand it and, and embrace it. But I mean, again like we 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 do these things and and how can you stick to something without some kind of support like it's hard and it's hard to receive support even with yeah. people that you trust it's it's hard it's just hard to receive I, th- it. I think yeah it is for sure and it, if you go to a person like a friend that's like hey man i'm having this issue like right and you, you feel comfortable enough to tell them like hey i'm having issues with anxiety or health or something what's wrong Keep talking. I, I'll, I'll, I'll interject in a minute. Okay. And then they just ignore it or they just downplay it. You're like, okay, well, I guess I'm not going to open up to anybody. Mental then. note. Yeah. Men- okay. I guess, that, I guess, the, I guess happens. the mm-hmm. solution here is don't tell anybody yep. about it. I'll just Shut keep up. it bottled up. Right. Mm-hmm. What's your, what's your, so, I'm dying to know what you're going to so, say. Is this me talking to you and you just, not no. pay, okay. It was that, that video that we had on a text earlier today. It was like, it was a TikTok oh, yes. and it was these guys playing video games and so it sounds like there's three or four of them on yeah. the, the headset. And the one guy goes, hey, if if I really needed something from you, would you guys be there for me? And it's just immediately these three dudes saying, no. I mean, what? It was brutal. It was, it was brutal. Yeah. Brutal. They I mean, just it ripped them apart. Being like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll bury you knowing that I could have done something and yeah, didn't. Yeah. And yeah. like, they're just being, it's dudes, just being funny, right, you know, right, funny. Right. But that's, kind of accurate with how at least men are like absolutely because like you never have the person like that you could go to and be like hey man i'm feeling a certain way and they're like yeah uh oh, well cool, toughen up dude cool, yeah. cool story bro cool, dude, let's sucks. go let's go out man yeah, like, yeah. chicks bro go like, drink it off <laughs> yeah It'll exactly toughen up. up suck it up Work out. yeah yeah, <laughs> right. yeah but it, i mean like like he said like we have this group and like of guys that we have a text message with and we're like we're always checking on each other to be like hey are you doing this and like it's really nice and like feel comfortable enough to open up and be like, Hey, I'm having this issue with whatever. And they're like, Hey man, you know, try this, do this. Like it's such a nice support group. And um, you don't usually have yeah. that. Like that's not something like where I could open up and tell somebody like, Hey, I'm having an issue with, uh, having an eating habit or like anxiety or something like that. And they're like, Hey, uh, meet up with me today. Let's go over something that you could try. Right. And like, and what, what do those conversations feel like compared to your other group texts or your other relationships? I mean, th- think about there is a stark contrast yeah, to I, those relationships versus other ones. Yeah, because yeah. I, I feel like certain group texts that we have, you say something like that, they're like oh, instantly you start yeah. ripping you apart. Yeah, yeah. like right? And you're going to get yeah. just torn apart. Right. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm not bringing that up in this and, conversation. And I don't think that those are necessarily unhealthy relationships. No, like I said, like, that video that we just different. Yeah, exactly. Right. I'm like, that's like that video that when Marco sent that earlier, I'm like, those are the best friends you could have right, right. there. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Because they're just making, having fun with you. Like, right. that's yeah. like, that's a different way of handling it. But right. like, just getting to that point of actually opening up and feeling comfortable to say something is mm-hmm. that's always a tough thing for, I mean, I'll say maybe just guys, maybe I don't well, know. I or anybody, say, I don't from know. From the male perspective, I think that w- if you're comfortable enough to say things that are just completely brutal on some level, we know that like, if it came down to it, yes, oh, they're going to have, you me. might be there for me. However, those intermediate non life or death situations I don't know. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if. And those are everyday situations. Uh, right. And mm-hmm. and I think that by managing those everyday situations and having some support for those everyday situations, um, I, I got to believe that that helps you to at least resist the big issues going forward. And I don't know if that's how that works or not, but. It yeah, just makes sense I, I think to me. that we, I think in relationships, we kind of like dip our toe in the water to see who's what. And, and I, I would agree. I don't think those relationships are unhealthy. I think they're just different lev- levels of who can I go to. I also think that um, it takes more effort 
And we are, we are like so gendering just male and female here. So I just want to make that caveat too. People <laughs> yeah. are not just male and female, but, <laughs> but like, oh, that's true. Yeah. So like, I, I think that, um, men have to put a lot more emotional labor into being vulnerable. And I, t- I tell you that because my husband has like a, a pretty small or a pretty, actually a pretty large group, but like small group of friends that are from high school that he, that they're very cute. Just like, you know, your friendship, it's yeah. just like precious. And they say Super the same cute. things. Yeah. It's yeah. adorable. <laughs> and so, but he'll get off the phone with his friend and I was like, Hey, how's he doing? And he's like, he's good. And I was like, they had a baby like a year ago. And I'm like, how, how is she doing? And he's like, Oh, I didn't ask. And I'm like, and then like, I go through the things and I was like, how's his wife? Like we're over, you know? And he's like, Oh, like I didn't ask. I'm like, what, what the fuck do you talk about? <laughs> like, you don't like, there's no, and he goes, it's just weird. Like when I think about, and that's his best friend. Mm-hmm. And and that is someone that would do anything for our family. Mm-hmm. But he's, he said, like, I just feel like I have to go there. Like, it's not a natural, it's not a natural thing. I have right. to make, and when I'm talking to my friends, it's like, I'm going to die if my kid wakes up in the middle of the night again. Like I'm in a very dark place. Mm-hmm. And so it's like just a natural progression for me as a female. And for him, he he just says it takes a lot of work to do that. Yeah. It does. Um, and that's funny though. My wife and I have this same conversation all the time because we'll like, I'll be talking to Steve and we're talking about, Hey, uh, we're going to do Ben's birthday party this weekend. Okay, cool. That's the level of detail that I need, mm-hmm. right? Like we'll figure out the <laughs> yeah, rest. Yeah, we'll figure like, out. Yeah, we'll figure out the details. Time, are we supposed to bring before. something? Yeah. What time is that again? What's, what's the was theme? That today? Yeah. What you know? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. I'm like, seriously? I don't like, know. Ask, uh, tell Chelsea to text Liz. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, right. How do you live with this vague, <laughs> right? You know, level? Of, I'm like, I, it's I mean, just how that's what we do. My brain works. That's like I saw Brian today, and he's like talking about. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ready for Ben's party tomorrow. He's like, oh, that's this weekend. Yeah. But I mean, obviously Tara right. knew, like right, his wife right. knew, but he's just like, oh yeah, shit, I forgot. Yeah, like, yeah it's cool, man. Not mad about it. Mm-hmm. That's exactly how I feel. Like I forget about everything. Like we just don't have those detailed conversations. Mm-hmm. Right. You just look look past it. I don't know. What are we doing for the Browns game on Sunday? Right. That's what's important. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll know those those yeah. details. We'll right, I'm bringing this. I'm bringing burgers. Bring you the bring the charcuterie dogs. board. Yeah. <laughs> you can bring. Yeah. A good charcuterie board. I'm a fan. Oh okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You should Wait, start what? incorporating. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you are white men who like um, bourbon. Uh, so right, is that yeah, that's okay yeah. in their thirties? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because we had the what, what was the uh, the snack? A was, grazing platter. The, no, what was the thing we had as Wait, kids? What? What the? What was the little snack? snack oh, lunchables. lunchables. Oh. oh, yeah, that was a start. Er, the adult lunchables. Yeah, that's what, that was the start of it for us. That's like our generation right there. My lunchables didn't have brie. Oh. Oh. Well, no, they're just better Lunchables. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are just adult Lunchables. Oh, Wait, sure. Time out. We need to like yeah, rewind. What's a, yeah, what is a grazing board? Yeah, because I feel like I need oh, to get into that. I, to be fair, I'm not sure if there's much of a difference. Okay. I think that grazing boards came from people not being able to pronounce charcuterie. Charcuterie is a tough one. It's like it charcuterie. Charcuterie. Shik- 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 and, and for sure, we're still probably pronouncing right. it. Oh, yeah, we're botching it for sure. But uh, like, I don't know. Like, I think it's probably just the same like thing. The, the I like Pinterest grazing board way better. Oh, yeah. like steak in there. Like, yeah, that's what I think of like burgers. Like, just. Like, fr- like something? different types of French fries. Like, okay. just okay. like a big. Okay. Now dead. we're getting somewhere. Uh, yeah. On a fancy board. And chicken yeah. fingers. Yeah. Different types of French fries. Like, I go to McDonald's, mm-hmm. Arby's. Mm-hmm. Just put a bunch just of different put it on there. there. All the sauces. A bunch of different chicken sandwiches. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> We talked about getting different chicken sandwiches we and see who has the best food. About food <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Taco. Did you say Taco Bell or Taco? Oh, about it? does Taco Ooh. Bell have a chicken? No, sandwich? no. Oh. They have a chicken we taco. Talk about food. Oh, a lot. oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, actually, this is the longest we've. No, we talked about fruit snacks and stuff yeah. earlier. So usually we get into food though at yeah. some point in the episode. Well. Before I forget, your son who is getting up in the middle of the night. Well, constantly. there's two of them. Oh, Micah, so, Micah's. So they um, both get up. Well, you sure. Um, Micah's eyes go black. He, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's my older one, and he sleepwalks, and it is um, okay. So that's different. Gross. Yeah. And Miles, who has the allergy disorder, he's my little guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's not a. I want to get out of bed and. No, it's like my okay. stomach is like okay. the depths of hell. Okay, so this would not be. Never mind then. But you can see something about <laughs> so, Micah. Micah's a horrible sleeper. Well, so. I, Mike, I'm very blessed. Like outside of my daughter who will like every once in a while creepily stand in the hallway mm-hmm. and 
you know, want to hug, um, <laughs> which is fine. Outside of that, they're both wonderful sleepers. Good. But we've, I can't remember who was on the show that talked about this, but it's this device. Oh. It's a Oh, light, the alarm the, clock the, thing. Yeah. With the, uh, so it's a light. Okay to wake. Brew. Sound machine. What is it? Okay to wake. Is it that Maybe. one? Yeah, I think so. Because oh. Tom Brew. Oh, yeah, it was Tommy. Yeah. yeah. And it like turns green when, when they're, they're allowed, allowed to, to come get out of yeah. the room. All right. So, you know, okay. My son doesn't give it a shit about that. <laughs> That thing would be unplugged <laughs> in two seconds. Sam would be like, eh. he's like in his he's like in his bed eating Oreos. Like, what's up, mom? Yeah, he's I'm like, like yeah. your light's not green. He'd be like, cool. He's I'm like, still right. doing it. Like, we'll I give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he's a deeply feeling child, and uh-huh. he feels very deeply like he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know how that um, goes. But actually, we do use that, and most nights he does listen to okay. that. And if he doesn't, then he gets he chooses. We say he chooses a consequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Attachment focused parenting. Uh huh. <laughs> and um, yep. I'm really choosing the consequence. Song Let's loves be it. to choose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you're going to choose your freaking yeah. consequence yeah. because yeah. you've eaten all of the granola bars and I just right. went to Target. Right. So, yeah, those go Monday. quick. Yeah, yeah, those go really quick. We have those little cereal bars and those things would be, I'm like, is all right, now I want some waffles. I'm like, you just had two cereal bars. Yeah. Like, that's no, that's your you breakfast. To to- yeah, this is that's it, man. Okay, we're done. Yeah. But the okay to wake has been actually, and I have it with my... We're foster parents too, mm. and it works oh. well with um, whenever we have a foster placement. Mm-hmm. They do pretty well. It takes them a couple of days to adjust. Sure. And but my littlest guy really, he's kind of a rule follower, but he'll just sit quietly in his room until. Oh. until That's something I think off. I could do that with Ben, and maybe I'll train Jack on that one. Mm-hmm. Sam, there's no chance. Mm-hmm. Like he's just too far gone with mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. <laughs> he's like he's just gone. he's just not gonna he's not gonna deal with yeah. it. Um, but Ben is the type where if he does something wrong. He know like he sees my reaction and he mm-hmm. just instantly bolts to his room, sl- shuts the door, and puts himself in timeout. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, he just he knows and yeah. he just goes. He'll go and cry in his room for a little while. Yeah, but see, Ben will also like happily do that just to do the thing that he's not allowed to do. That's true because he knows what he's mm-hmm. doing. He's like, I'll just do this myself real quick. Get out five more minutes and I'm <laughs> good to go. Off yeah, and runs. Mm-hmm. Fine, I'll I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, fine. Go to your room then. That's okay. At least, yeah. at least I have a few minutes. Worth it. <laughs> yeah, good for you, buddy. Oh man, uh, this has been amazing. Yeah, Jenny, do you have anything that you need to like tell us or like any? Yeah, like, any like, message? I don't want to see your session notes after today. <laughs> yeah, these two are. Other than these, like, these two are clients. Yeah. I don't have to talk about. Yeah, these so these two are insane. They shouldn't have they feed children. Their kids so much sugar. Yeah, yeah. they start the Probably day with a sugar smoothie. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then gummies after and school. Gummies. And then gummies. So I don't even know what kind of gummies. Yeah, I was gonna say what kind of gummies do you have? The best gummies. Yes. CBD oh, gummies, I mean, no, THC those are gummies. Yeah. Those, are, those are very expensive. That's a lot to be giving our kids. I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. like buying bulk in the bag. Melatonin. You, just, you give them. No, you buy in bulk no, melatonin actually, don't gummies. Do that. I don't even want to. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you have opinions about melatonin? A little bit. Oh yeah, tell me. We probably have the same ones. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I Let's get into it. Am not a huge fan of inducing. Uh, an altered state for your developing brain. He- I for human. sure agree with that. Okay. Yeah. I was uh, never I, into, I was always nope. terrified because I always thought about like, oh man, I'm having a tough time sleeping. But if I got into these sleeping pills, mm-hmm. then I'm going to be dependent on these sleeping pills. Like I will not be able to fall asleep naturally again because I'm just going to be dependent on well, something helping me to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I mean, I don't have a problem with that because I could fall asleep as soon as my head hits a pillow. I'm like, you I'm also done. Have a new baby. That's so. true too. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, on one hand, whatever works, right? Like I'm, I try For not sure. to be super judgy For sure. and like, if you need to do whatever it is, fine. Again, maybe in moderation. However, yeah. I, my dad always said, I'm not very smart, but I'm strong. So take that for what it's worth. Um, as far as I understand it, like when you take any kind of a supplement, it's typically there to either replace or mimic something that your body naturally produces. Mm-hmm. And when you take those supplements, your body ceases to then produce them naturally. Correct. And so... And that's a problem for four-year-olds. Right. Okay. Yes. So if you're doing that every so night... it seems and to me that you're yes. further perpetuating the problem yes. long-term. Yes. So you're, you're sacrificing long-term health of your child for short-term happiness for you because mm-hmm. you don't want to deal with putting your child to bed 
in Naturally. whichever <laughs> manner. And, and look, that it's hard, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna have those nights of them not going of to sleep. Four mm-hmm. hour bedtime nights where I'm like, I cannot read another story. I cannot lay with you any longer. And 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 again, I think that's maybe why I'm so non judgmental about co sleeping or you know story. You know, I, I don't know, like screens even. Like yeah. I'm okay with that. And, and again, who am I? Like, who cares? But uh, I just, like, the, the, the supplementation is just... It's a problem. I, I think the widespread use of it is a problem. I think of um, some friends, and I think about, you know, my own kids who don't sleep particularly well. And I think about clients, and there are some... I, my kids don't get it, but there are some kids that... I'm suspicious. Would they ever be able to fall asleep without it? Maybe not. However, they'll have to continue to take it and their brain stops producing it. Mm -hmm. So at what point will they have to take how much Right now? If it's like for a season and you know, it's again, it's the moderation thing. If it's for a season and you only sleep three hours a night in order to function and go to work, you have to do it. Then then you have to do it. And that's, there's no guilt there, but it is managing a symptom and not getting to the root of the issue. Right. And that's my biggest, my biggest beef with it. And they sell it at freaking Walgreens. Well, that's what I don't candy understand. Like, like, what are you doing? How, like I could see if you went to your pediatrician and said, these are the issues that we're having. This is, this yes. is what we've tried. This isn't but working. You could just bite. And you worked with you your like pediatrician the good tasting to come gummies, up with a plan. Like, it's like candy. Like right. it's just, right. there you go. It's right here on the shelf. Right. right. Like I don't understand that. And Again, very blessed that my kids in general, wonderful sleepers. Like, I can't overstate that enough. Like, I understand that I'm very fortunate in that regard. But I I just can't get on board with the popping some gummies so that you can have a couple extra hours at night. Because eventually they're going to fall asleep. You're going to get that. There's going to be tough nights. But, like, I, I have to agree. Like, I just can't get to that point where I'm like, okay, here. Take this. Go and to if sleep. it keeps happening, and then you, they need to have further consultation. Like sleep disorders do exist in sure, kids. Sure, absolutely. Um, and and more often than we think they do. There's a book called The Rested Child that's really good by Chris Winter, and it talks about that. Like it's you know, are they getting enough sunlight? Are they getting enough physical activity? Mm-hmm. So it's more about like, I get that you have to use this right now. Use it as a tool, just mm-hmm. like technology, right. just like sugar, and then you know, make a game plan when you have the energy to try and figure out how we're going to tackle this, because that really is the case with the supplementation piece. Like you'll have to keep amping it up and their brains will stop producing it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Something that's natural. Like you said, like that's something you don't want to get rid of. But that's what, that's why people use it. They're like, it's a natural, it's naturally occurring in your body. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So if, if you're not able to sleep, then maybe you don't have enough. Then maybe you need to talk to a specialist or something like that. It's like getting your vitamin D or something like that. Like exactly. Go talk to somebody about it. it. usually again generalized statement but it usually is related to technology a lot of the times or they don't have a good sleep hygiene program you know mm-hmm. so well yeah i mean i, I that's why i've talked to some parents before and it's like and i'll ask like well well what do you do at bedtime and it's like well what do you mean? we eat dinner <laughs> and then i have to get on a conference call for work because i have to talk to somebody in another mm-hmm. country and you know, pretty much just like give them their iPad and say, go to bed. And by the time I get out done with my call, they're usually asleep. Right. Okay. Well, is there other things that we could do? Cause now that the iPad's not working. Right. What else could we do? Could we maybe take some time and like, like do two a bath? weeks and do a boot camp, or right. or just say like have a sound machine in the room right. and say this is our new thing. Or it, yeah, my new thing, a Tony. You guys know what Tonys are? Tony Roni, like on pizza. That's pretty good, but no. <laughs> so it's this, it's brilliant and such a gimmick and we're hook, line and sinker, but it's this music box. <laughs> okay. Aww. It's, um, it's magnetic on top and you buy the little Tonys and they're different characters and they read stories. Oh, so like we've got Peppa Pig and Ariel right now. Mm. And so, um, it's for Sloney. Yeah. And so like, and you can get custom ones too, where you can read and have it recorded onto the Ooh. Tony. And I mean, they're stupid expensive and it was a wonderful gift that we got. And now we have to buy these Tonys. And I'm like, <laughs> Are okay, the Tonys fine. super expensive too? They're like 15 bucks. Well, that's, I mean, um, hey, the, the machine works, was works. expensive. The, the Tonys, you know, I mean, it's no different than buying a couple books and they last yeah. and they're like the perfect amount of time and they end 
And that's really helped Sloan stay in her bed. Nice. Um, I like that. Look at that. And the nice thing about it is it's easy enough because it's magnetic. And so if she does wake up, sometimes I'll hear, and I'm like, oh, geez, she's up. <laughs> Get the but other then I'll hear. Yeah. No, I'll hear. She does it herself. Aww. She'll she'll put it back on. She'll put the aerial one up, and then she'll crawl back in bed. And she's now listening to Little Aww. Mermaid. That's awesome. Pretty cool. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool. Never heard of that. Mm-hmm. And again, not everyone has access to that kind of sure. stuff. For and sure, it's much easier. But at least you to said go like like a, like a sound machine. But you could also, and if you can't get the Tony, get a get a phone or something that you could just have on lock and just put like a. They read. They read, they read the stories like YouTube. Audible, Absolutely. like Audible yeah. or something yeah. like that, and just put that like on the dresser. I do that for my dog. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> sound, tried. sound machine it or was something. Really quiet. I tried. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, I'm like your dog, and I'm like, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, try I like a sound machine or something like that. Yeah. No, so, <laughs> did you buy Walter or Tony? No. <laughs> <laughs> your dog's name is Walter. Yes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so Walter has a Tony. Walter no, has a Tony. Doggy Tony. No, when he was a puppy. I was losing my mind because sure. he was, we were crate training him and he rawr, rawr, was a bad know, boy. He was really rough. Yeah. Puppies oh, are like babies, man. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have a, go ahead. Oh my Thank God. You. I remembered it. There it is. There we go. Can we hit a button? Oh, that's um, impressive. No, I, <laughs> so I was looking for, I was just going to put sound machine on our iPad and just like put it by his crate to hopefully someone said that might help. And so I'm like browsing through like, they, they have all sorts of channels for like mm. dog soothing, bedtime, whatever. And then there's one dog where soothing. there's actually they read like that. stories to your dog. Amazing. Did, did it work? No. You still <laughs> tried. Hey, you tried. Yeah. Hey, you tried. Yeah. So it's now good. he just takes melatonin before bed. <laughs> <laughs> for the dog. Doggy <laughs> melatonins. Uh, I, w- I would be into that. I would not. I, for, oh, for animals, yeah. I would not. I would not be against that. No, at no. All. I need something for Walter. No. Yeah, their their lifespan. Well, there's like puppies Olaft. That is yeah, a legitimate. Yeah, thing. That's a thing. I need to mm-hmm. look into. Can, yeah, he's a puppy. He'll be fine. Your puppy has a depressive disorder. I, he's not. Well, is that what that is? I don't know. Is uh, it? I mean, well, he's just hyperactive, irritable, and oh well. Because he's a puppy, he'll be he fine. He's a puppy. He'll, yeah. be, he'll be fine. Like he's got a lot of energy. Melatonin, give him melatonin, yeah. though. Yeah. For sure. Like my dog is now six, and he just lays around yeah. all day. Mine does too. That's true. And he gets excited when someone comes over, and then he goes back to laying down. Yep. I tried these uh, essential oil uh, <laughs> infused treats. So your dog has had. <laughs> hold on. God, the therapy that Wal- this dog Walter. Has. I this, this is a case a study. It, it's not anymore. <laughs> no, it's, it this was. is out of the open. Yeah, this is so it's gone. Walter, his name is Walter, yeah. first of all, which is a very, very regal name. And very regal. Yes. You, you have researched appropriate mm-hmm. sound machines for your dog, mm-hmm. accessed those, and now you're doing dog essential oils. Like, is that what's happening? He's got like he has like Pretty one much. of those like those salt rocks like next to him. Yeah, like, like a Himalayan salt. Yeah, Himalayan salt. Should do that. <laughs> <laughs> it has that down there. It's like a it's like a meditation room for the dog. It's like incense burning. Mm-hmm. I'm or not above trying it. Te- Temper Pedic. Yeah. Oh no, he chews any kind of. Oh okay. Uh, mat that's in there. Okay. Yeah, because we did have a really nice one. Yeah, he did. It smelled and only. Twenty threw up on right. Yeah. Ended up in the garbage. Great. Yeah, that's that great. Yeah. Good times. Good and times. He is. He's just a puppy. We'll get. He's a puppy. It, yeah, it's like, like a baby. Yeah. See. Damn dogs. Damn dogs. But yeah, <laughs> essential oils. And, yeah. Tony's for the dog. Oh, no, Tony for the dog. No, Tony for the dog. Oh. Take the Tony down there. <laughs> maybe he wants to listen to Peppa Pig. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. I don't know. He just wants human interaction. Is yeah, I get, that. I, get that. I get that. I get that. He just wants to be like here. Be like, hi, I'm Walter. That's, that's a problem. Yeah. 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 You know who to send him to. To be fair, we knew that. <laughs> I'm booked. <laughs> <laughs> no space. We knew that his breed was going to. Oh, yeah. What, the, is, what is he? <sighs> Labber? No. No, he's a sheep a doodle. Sheep a sheep a doodle. Oh my god. What is what is a what does it look like? Uh, a sheep a doodle. He's a, a, a English sheepdog poodle mix. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. He's very is, cute. is he cute dog. big? Is, or he's, is he gonna be a big boy? Yeah, he's gonna be like sixty or seventy okay. pounds. Like I had not a, huge. But I had a standard poodle growing okay. up, so I had like the big yeah. 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 So like more that size, yeah. but longer hair. Sure. Black and white. You gotta get him shaggy. Get that's the haircut. Cute. Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, he's a cute, cute, pup. A cute pup. I like him. But yeah, now I'm feeling a little bit insecure about the way that it's I okay. treat my dog. Listen. Hey, d- whatever dis- works. Discomfort, I don't know. I might push back a little bit. 
<laughs> discomfort discomfort can be a teacher. So uh, maybe, right. you know, maybe yeah. think about should I be giving essential oils to my yeah. dog? I don't know. And start like beating them or something. Oh, you, you yeah. should. Fr- that's, yeah. that's, that's the solution for sure. Option. I mean, mine was the, <laughs> the change in a, uh, a can of like a pop can yeah, and I, shake it at him and like it worked. But now he's just like a skittish little dog. I probably scared the trauma. shit out of him. Yeah. <laughs> When he got a chance, though, he found that thing one day when he was a puppy. and he Tore it apart. It. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised he wasn't bleeding everywhere. Shooting he, pennies for a week. Oh, man. He was not happy with that thing. But it worked. He doesn't, there you go. doesn't bark yeah. at anybody. He doesn't jump on anybody. He tries when they get to the house. Teddy for, is super he's well good behaved. Dog. Mm. He's the best. Good pup. Good pup. Walter will be the same way. Yeah. I have we'll confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we'll end it on that. <laughs> dog therapy. Mm. Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Jenny, this has been amazing. Yeah. yeah. So much fun. Yes. I it took a lot from this too. This, huge is, this is great. Expectations coming in. Huge um, expectations. Yeah, yeah we announced absolutely. you at the door. We had guests when you came in. We're like, guys, yeah. special guest here. I've been telling everybody. We're like, listen, <laughs> you know, Excel- Jenny Fetzer. <laughs> yeah, kind of a big deal I'm around sure here. You've heard. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but true. no, like super excited, and I, I did kind of have like some. I don't want to call them expectations, but I had some ambitions for, because again, we wanted to branch out a little bit, mm-hmm. and, um. We didn't necessarily want to do that with somebody that we had personal relationships with sure. because it's just harder yeah. to do the show, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so this was wonderful. Like yeah, I couldn't be more happy with yep. the conversation, so and Thank I'm yeah. gonna go work through some things. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> just call me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm probably gonna go make a uh, what do we call it? A Grizzly board, what it? Oh, grazing board, grizzly, grizzly mm-hmm. board. You that sounds kind of cool. Too. Yeah. All right, I'm in a for that. Grazing board, yes. Mm-hmm. Next time we'll we'll have a grazing board. Uh, yes. That will that will be my yeah. expectation. Okay. All right, one hundred percent. That could happen for sure. Okay. Or lunchables. We'll uh, how do we? <laughs> On top of a board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we brought this fancy board. I see the Some package dunkaroos. for the lunchables over there. <laughs> Some dunkaroos. Oh, dunkaroos! Like Stop the, it. The slimy baloney. Oh god, oh. that stuff. Oh, that's, you think about that. Oh. <laughs> that's what we ate. It's what we ate. We yeah. loved it all the time. Make a little pizza. Mm. Jenny, how can people find you or get a hold of you for services or uh, mm. just maybe some information or or whatever? Sure. So our website is anchorcounselingohio.com. Um, like I said, we have 19 staff, so, um, there's lots of different things you can find there. And the unique thing about our practice is, um, we're insurance, but also we have sliding fee scale. But if there's ever a situation where someone cannot afford services, it's covered. Mm. So there's no inability to access care for, for us. Wonderful. Um, so, um, that's the name of the website. And then my Instagram handle is trauma therapist, Jenny. Which is sounds great, but it looks weird because it's trauma. The rapist Jenny <laughs> and my husband, my really, yeah. my really supportive husband, was like, "Do you want to change that?" And I'm like, "Well, I already did it, and I can't change it." Yeah. So if you want to find me, I'm on there sometimes. Okay. I feel like you can change it. I, I like I for sure could. Yeah. It works, but like, what do I? What I mean. I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to get my doctorate, so once I get that, I could, oh, yeah. I could, I could change it to Doctor Janet Jenny. Ooh, yeah. I have two first names. Okay. Anyhow, but that's where like you that. can, that's where you can find <laughs> okay. me for right now. Perfect. Trauma, Perfect. the rapist Jenny. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, well, again. <laughs> Thank I you love that. so, so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this is awesome. Super entertaining. You should do this more often okay. if you don't. <laughs> I mean, not not even just with us, but you should talk more if you don't already. Because um, yeah, you're is, very good. So. Yes, thank you. this is awesome. It's going to be um, great. Thank yeah, thank you so much. Uh, make sure you follow Jenny the Rapist. <laughs> <laughs> trauma. No, wait. Trauma. Trauma. Tra- trauma. Trauma the Rapist. Trauma the Rapist Jenny. <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> I'm afraid of what might pop up if I type in trauma, the trauma, rapist Jenny. Trauma, trauma, the rapist Jenny. I think it is trauma therapist Jenny. Okay. Trauma therapist on Instagram. Jenny. On Instagram. Yeah. Mm. Find her there. Mm-hmm. Make sure you find her there. Make sure you find us. We're just the talking dads. <laughs> Pretty plain and simple. There we should Boring. Think ours Boring. <laughs> uh, yeah. Follow us. Uh, tell all your friends about us because they're going to want to hear this episode. For sure. Uh, and then, um, you know, Share with your friends. Make sure you find us on your favorite podcast. 
uh, I don't even remember how we do our exit. I'm very YouTube, Instagram, off. Facebook, all that. Oh, and TikTok. Oh yeah. Kind of getting kind well, of a Steve's big deal. Doing that for us. I'm working on You're it. I got some more stuff to put on there, but yeah, we'll get there. Um, okay. So, uh, anything else from you? Nope. Okay. Thank you so much, Steve. Anything else? Nope. Good okay. to go. Thank you so much. Uh, in the meantime, be, be present, present, be patient, patient stay, stay positive. positive. Thank you. Peace. Hey guys, if you love what you just heard or watched and we know you did do us a solid and hit that thumbs up, share with your friends and throw us a comment literally about anything. Your support legit keeps us going. Oh, and don't forget to give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate you.